music producer and sports raconteur extraordinaire and the mechanical mangler at the controls. <laughs> Look out, it's only clown. Here we go. The day I was born. Uh, bum, 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 bum. It's just a Wednesday. It's a hump day, right? It's Wednesday, right? It's a good sign. All day. Yeah, I'll be damned. How's it going? 303, cover Pete and Flounder. Here's the number. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Our number 404 741 1230. 741 1230. By the way, I still feel terrible. I, was, I got up last night, so I feel terrible about Mike. When Mike called yesterday and John Flounder said we got Mike on the phone, and I never got to him until I remembered, and he was long gone after that. So, Mike, if you're the Mike who was on hold forever yesterday, if you're still listening, I'm begging you to call by. Well, if you remember, he got the Mockingbird tickets, so he got some free tickets. Well, anyway, but he he wanted to do, he was he was offering to do something or say something that was on his mind, and I felt bad that I didn't give him an opportunity. So, anyway, uh, we love our phone calls. And again, the modern day radio, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a whole different beast. And so, uh, you know, we, we just have fun doing whatever we do. We have our YouTube uh, maniacs, whatever they call themselves over there. Uh, anything new on YouTube these days? Anybody causing trouble? I guess mostly just, you know, a lot of naysayers on... Uh, <laughs> uh, they've been all right lately. Hell, so. that's, good. that's a good sign. Hey. <laughs> anyway, 30, almost 305. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I've uh, Pete Davis, anything new in the mountains of Macon up there, sir? <clears throat> I got in such an argument with a guy at the bar last night. Oh, my. What happened? He was, he claimed he was a 1980s pop star. A 1980s pop star? Yeah, really? Yeah, I didn't believe him, but he was adamant. He was adamant. <clears throat> you know, I swear to God, I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna hire a private dick to go in there when you're sleeping and burn He's whatever adamant. the hell. Oh God. <laughs> Now, how come they never make fun of him in the morning show, the America's Angel Morning Team? I mean, my God, they get the camera every freaking day. It's unbelievable. I'm nobody. They never say a You're word somebody. about Pete Davis and Flounder. They never talk about you. <laughs> Other than how you want to get the hell away from me. <laughs> That's it. Has Flounder quit yet? <laughs> Looking for a real job? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, God. All right, 306. All right, I don't feel like talking about the news right now. We just had the news at 3 o'clock, so, you know, we got the what? bridge. Say, well, no, but, I mean, we got the, we got a lot of bridge stuff. Engineers say there was a flaw, uh, ways you can fix it. Uh, also, if you are in a car that suddenly goes into water, a tip or two on how to make sure you extricate yourself, and also a couple of safety tips. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Also, let's see, uh, President's stupid face reaction. To him saying that he used to take the train over that bridge, which, of course, is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, uh, Mayor Pete Booty Fudge is going to be talking about how uh, uh, it's not just roads that are racist. Now it's bridges that are racist as well. And uh, heavens, oh, uh, 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 now, Pete Davis, let me We have Holy Crab at Sports coming up a little after five. But as a kind of a preview, uh, are you up in the camp that believes that the number one pick in the NFL football draft will be this guy, Caleb Williams, the quarterback at uh, USC? It probably will be, but tell you the truth, I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. And the reason is, see, social media is starting to really get inflamed. Now, the draft is next is uh, in April, a couple of weeks from now, yes. three, I think, a little less than a month, I believe. And uh, all of a sudden, social media is just firing up, and for good reason. I mean, if you know, if you run a football, we're talking about pro football. We're talking about egomaniac, uh, you know, muscle-bound, uh, hard-working, uh, you know, try-to-kill-the-other-guy football player. Players in a pretty tough, demanding, you know, game, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm not sure this is going to be the leader of that locker room. Whoever he's, picks he's a, the he's Bears, a, <laughs> he's a California kid, and he, I mean, he cries to his mama in the stands, and she has to hold him after a loss. I, and he's, you know, I'd forgotten and, that. Remember, this is the guy again. We're going to talk about him wearing pink nail polish and carrying a pink clutch purse and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and I remember, I'd forgotten. I remember the uh, there was a, a controversy about him. There was a picture of him with his mother in the stand. Was it after his law? He, he lost the game. And yeah. he was with his mother, bawling his eyes out. And at first, I thought, oh, you know, he's sharing a sweet moment with his mother. But I didn't realize it was because he was crying because he lost the game and had to go to mommy to feel bad. I'm like, oh, my God, Dad, no, in no. In the wow, stands. Wow, yeah. He went uh, up in the stands yeah, yeah, while yeah. his teammates are going yeah. to the locker room. Yeah, yeah. 
And they all like him. Now, all the Southern oh, yeah. Yeah, kids say he's yeah. a great quarterback, yeah. a great team leader, blah, blah, blah. But he's a California kid trying to play in Chicago. I don't uh, think his style goal. works in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, the way he plays, uh, just uh, yeah. I don't see him in anyway. Chicago. And I want more quick sports things. Uh, Flounder uh, passed this message along just a moment ago. The Braves were supposed to be opening uh, their baseball season tomorrow. And now it'll be Friday because there's rain in the forecast. So they postponed the game till tomorrow, which is good. I mean, fine. Although, it, yeah. And, and, of course, there's raw sewage flowing through the streets of Philadelphia. they got to worry about that, too. So Yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> that's every day. Well, that's pretty much Philadelphia. That's why I call it Philadelphia. So, anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's... Uh, 309 is our, our time. Uh, 404-741-1230. And uh, no elevator girl last night. I waited a few minutes and... Uh, no! Well, maybe she'll show up on Friday. Maybe she went through his security tapes and uh, bribed somebody in the security office to get the security tapes to see who that was, that stranger that she was so enamored with and talked to me. And uh, I tried to find out who it was, and maybe she was listening to the show now, and she heard we're going to be doing a live shot at uh, uh, Nucky's uh, uh, Hoagies on Friday, 3 to 6. You are and so she's, high. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? I do very you much. You want to hear something funny? I am. Uh, how many how many years do you, have we did this Kimmer Media podcast thing? How many years have we been doing it now? Four, th- four, maybe? three, four year, I guess. Yeah. Why? Why? What did we we, do? we finally turned a profit last year. Oh, my, no, wait a minute. How could we possibly? <laughs> we didn't make anything. Is it single Nobody digits? <laughs> I'm at <a> nine dollars. <laughs> we didn't even break ten. <laughs> we made a profit. No last kidding. Year. Well, where's the money? <laughs> we already yeah. we already divvy the money up. Oh, it's gone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's called salary. You know? that's, that's right. I swear to you, I mean, again, if you're just, if you're new You want to know how much we made? You, you want to know how, yeah, how much do. we I made? Yeah, I do. I want how much we made. Uh, guess how much uh, money, how much we, because remember, when we started off, before we did one show, we were $35,000. I was going to say, the, the history was, we went into, to, to form the corporation, and the and they put together the papers, and, uh, well, you're already uh, $34,000 in debt. <laughs> so, wait a minute. We haven't done we have done it. How do you figure that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we didn't make any money. I mean, it was all we, people would, you know, send us five dollars a month and stuff like that, which was great. I mean, God bless them. Yeah. I mean, nobody, you know, it was all for free and they uh, people send us money. And it was, it was dead. And we, you know, we, we made a few hundred bucks a month. It was we never made any money on it. It wasn't exactly like Joe Rogan, you know. And, no. and, and by the way, well, I'm, and that's my, you know, I, I'm embarrassed. I'm uh, sort of humiliated and embarrassed that I couldn't draw an audience so we could make a living. We could not make a living doing the podcast. Well, not even close. I couldn't pay my car note. Uh, well, doing we a can podcast. say we made a profit. How much do you think we made I, last Five year? grand. I have no idea. Higher. Seven grand. Higher. Eleven thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Between three people, <laughs> and then for the whole year we split it up, and so we made three, yeah. three thirty five hundred bucks a piece, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love it. I mean, really think about that. I was, I'm a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> we had such dreams. <laughs> oh Lord. I mean, we really did. We thought we could pull. Again, we thought if we could get ten percent. Of our former radio listeners to give us five yeah. bucks a month, we could have survived. I mean, we, we well, had well, the listenership; they just didn't they just pay. They wouldn't pay. I mean, yeah, well, they people were, they say were they did, but they, yeah, but they didn't. Yeah. So, we yeah. had we had a million downloads a year, but yeah. uh, every a million we, plus. We, before, yeah, yeah. Before we did it, we took a poll and said, "How many yeah. would do five dollars a month?" And it was like forty thousand people yeah. said, yeah. and 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 hardly anyone did it. Yeah. And again, if you can get thirty or forty thousand people a month. You know, with, with a couple and of it dollars. Was, it, it, it started with Patreon and everything, and then COVID happened, and then everything yeah. went to yeah. hell in a handbag. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I, I, you know, it's just it's a fun part of life. It's just, but I was a president of my own company. <laughs> you were. And you were the CEO. I'll never forget that you Flounder. came over and you were so proud of those checks. And That's right. I have those CFO. Checkbook. I still have it right here. In fact, here, oh hell, I got it right here. Because tomorrow, <laughs> now tomorrow, I got to pay you out of my Kimmer Media checkbook. No, no, Kimmer, Kimmer. Uh, Kimmer Media the, uh, LLC, right here, baby. Here's the, it's right there. Yeah, the, 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 Mr. 1982, I've already transferred the money. You don't have to write. Oh me uh, well, hell, I brought my checkbook and everything. <laughs> As CFO, I have already <laughs> <laughs> embezzled the money. <laughs> right yeah, there, Jack. CFO, chief freaking wait. asshole. That's what you are. Right I'm going to wait three days for you to write me a check. <laughs> Now, see, why didn't I even think of that? <laughs> he just took the money. 
<laughs> He's got the account number. I don't know what the account number. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> hey, if, at least I if told you. If you had told me to go, you know, well, just transfer some thing to the thing, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Routing number? Oh, God. Anyway, uh, oh, we got so much going on here today. Inclu- uh, newsy stuff, Flounders Funnies, Holy Crap at Sports, uh, Pete's Tweets, and uh, we'll talk about, oh, John Stewart got caught once again being a phony, and uh, Donald Trump with his new Bible sale. We got a whole bunch of things coming up. 313, cover Pete and Flounder right here. Look out. <laughs> The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Tug, and here's what you missed from the Talkmaster. In in my attempt to uh, learn more Spanish, I've been trying to learn how to say SpongeBob SquarePants. Esponje de Roberto Pantalones Cuadrados. There you go. <laughs> the things that you will focus on when learning Spanish. <laughs> Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3 or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Hey, Atlanta, it's Mark from the Safe House. And now, the security riddle of the day. What's less secure than a fake safe from a furniture big box store? Joe Biden's fake border policy, of course. But hey, there is good news. This time next year, Joe Biden will not be president. So drop right, Atlanta Safe House, and check out the largest selection of safes in the Southeast. Build a wall around your valuables with a safe from the Safe House. We have certified delivery crews to install your safe. With over 30 years in the safe business, the Safe House is the place to buy safe in Georgia. So go to atlantasafehouse.com. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peyronie's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one evaluation and resolve your ED, peronies, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at StopMyED.com. Com. The Braves are back for the 2024 season and ready to fight for their seventh consecutive division title. Don't miss the opening homestand against the Arizona Diamondbacks April 5th through the 7th, followed by the New York Mets April 8th through the 11th. And on April 8th, the Braves will honor the 50th anniversary of Hank Aaron's record-breaking 715th home run with a special Hank Aaron bobblehead giveaway together with Truist. Visit Braves.com slash promos to get your tickets today. Atlanta Braves baseball. We are Braves country. Hey, it's Front Office Lowe's for Underdog Fantasy. The NBA season is still here, and there's no easier way to get in on all the action than with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em game. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real money. It's easy. Pick two to five players from at least two different teams. Select higher or lower on the player stats, and if your pick hits, you can win up to 100 times your money. It's legal in Georgia, and it's a ton of fun to play as you can watch the Atlanta Hawks. Stop playing against the pros night in and night out with their hundreds of different lineups. It's just you against the stat. It's that easy. Underdog Fantasy is even easier to get started. Go to their easy-to-use mobile app or to underdogfantasy.com. Sign up and use the promo code LOS, and Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. Plus, they'll give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick of entry. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code LOS, L-O-S, to get your first deposit of 10 or more matched, plus your special pick. Must be 18 and present in state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. Da 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 Willie Nelson. Da 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 and uh, I can't wait to get on the road again. Willie Nelson announced that he and his family were hard at work on a new brand of marijuana called Willie's Reserve on this day in 2015. Stores of that same name were being planned and were to include his signature brand and other strains of weed. 
That would be grown to meet quality standards. If you're going to have good weed, by golly, you better have really good weed. <laughs> now, Flounder, let me ask you this. Have you ever known anybody who's had any uh, Willie Nelson weed? I've tried the Reserve. It's a really? strong indica, yeah. It, uh, it's, a, it's a what? Strong? It's a strong indica. 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 I, now, what? I, I, I don't know. Is that from? It's uh, what does that indica mean? Is indica, that, sativa, and indica. So there's two different strands of marijuana: sativa, which is more upbeat, and indica, which is more relaxing. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you keep playing ignorant, right? Yeah, yeah. sir, Mr. Baker. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> just, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I deny it, Your Honor. I <laughs> want that smell. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Three, <laughs> three night drinking. <laughs> I believe your last bakery had both. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, our birthday is Kim Pete and Flounder, by the way. How's it going? 404 741 1231230. Our birthday list includes Brenda Song. Now, I didn't know this girl's name. I, I know her face. She was Christy in the social network, that little, kind of little hottie who did bad things in the bathroom with him when she found out he was going to be a billionaire. Uh, Brenda Song is 36. She was in social network. She was London Tipton on The Sweet Life on Deck, whatever that is, and Madison on the Hulu show Dollface. Anyway, I didn't know whether you maybe know her or not from a social, uh, social network. And let's see. I think she was the psycho one who started burning down and setting fires and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see. On this day in history, 1991, Donnie Wahlberg, the so-called tough guy in New Kids on the Block, was arrested in 91 in Louisville on arson charges. He poured vodka on his hotel room carpet and set it on fire. Well, I guess he thought at the time it was a good thing to do. He plea bargained it down to second degree criminal mischief or something. He's going to be fine. Uh, 320, cover Pete and Flounder. Our 3 o'clock hour brought to you by our good friends at First Liberty Building and Loan. If you need financing to grow your business, by golly, firstlibertyga.com. 320-404-741-1230. Oh, by the way, I heard the promo about our show coming up Friday at uh, at uh, Nucky's Hoagies, and I realized I can't find my coloring book pages. The promo said and I had like a hundred. I'm honestly, uh, <laughs> poor Pete's going darn. Uh, and honestly, and, and and I realized I think I threw them out. I think I, I think I said, well, screw this. Nobody wants these things because I tried to get them away before, and uh, so I don't blame you. Because who would hell would want me with coloring book pages? <laughs> But, you literally stood with your trunk open in the Rome Brave yes, parking did. lot. I stood right there. Trying to the, hand those out. Trying to, so who, anybody, I've got them, they're right here. I, me, you may not know. They were over here in this area, here where the truck. <laughs> <laughs> so screw it, throw them out. I don't care. Nobody, I, so I don't care. It's all right. I don't give a damn. We're going to do the show. And I'm, in fact, we're, nobody's coming. We're going to lock in the doors. At 301, the doors get locked and nobody's getting into Nucky's Hoagies. Well, I don't think that's a good idea. That's no, silly. That's stupid. They're trying to make a business over there. So, anyway, but it'll be. F- and by the way, I'm kind of I'm nervous about it. I, I'm just I, I don't I don't know why I'm nervous. I just, I'm not good with people. I, I just don't. I can't. There's no way I can. I just, I'm not. It's gonna. There's. I could be. If you don't pull at least one geriatric out of that uh, pile. <laughs> well, what if some hottie comes up and wants to take me out and make out in her, with her in a car afterwards? I mean, I you know what I mean? Then I go mean, do it. Well. <laughs> It's really that simple. <laughs> what he, what's the issue? <laughs> well, permission or I something? Didn't, here? I'm making everybody ill. <laughs> the very thought of it. <laughs> That's my job lately. Uh, but I will. And a couple of things. Honestly, we'll talk about the bridge here in a second. We have an update. Pete just found this too, or flounder somebody here in a minute ago. And I've got to get it on my phone because I don't have Daily Mail on my stupid iPad, which I hate. Which, by the way, is working today. So I'll give it that. Anyway, uh, so we'll get to that in a second. But first of all, speaking of, of the Friday thing, uh, I can't find the coloring book pages. Are, I guess I threw them out. I can't find them. Is that a phone call, by the way? I don't want to do a bad thing on phone calls again today. No, no, no. That was just someone asking okay. about Nuckies on Friday. I got gotcha. you. Um, anyway, and so I am going to be—I I am going to be giving away a lot of little trinket things, a lot of like military challenge coins. I've got—I brought uh, a few pictures, uh, small, you know, actual photographs of me on Jack the Good Boy, which I could sign for you if you want. I mean, just a little, you know, not, not great big, but just little, you know, stuff. Just little trinket stuff. I've got some hats and a bunch of T-shirts and things. I'm just going to, you know, give away to whatever. Uh, and I did 
did put on Facebook about the video of the of the magazine, Hot Bike Magazine, which featured me all in leather duds and chaps and everything else on my chopper, which was custom made at Earl Smalls Harley Davidson back in nineteen, I mean uh, two thousand four. Uh, and um, and there's a story about me in it and stuff like that, and it, it's really it was kind of, and, and and the problem is since I put that on there, everybody well not everybody uh, an awful lot of people are saying go oh, I'd love to have that I'd love to have that, and I realized uh, I saved one copy for Jennifer, uh, and this is the last copy that I know that I that I have or it's in existence, and I got to thinking I don't, I don't know I wouldn't know how to give it away to whoever I mean because so many people would really and I, and I got the thing and then I realized I'm being I'm really really ego stupid about this, and again uh, I shouldn't be even and talk about personal stuff, but the fact of the matter was, I didn't realize this at the time, and I didn't realize it until I started putting this stuff together for this for this personal appearance on Friday, doing our show live on Friday uh, at uh, at, um, at the uh, hoagie shop. And Nucky's Hokies. And I started, I realized all of a sudden when I put that magazine in my hands for the first time in I, got, I don't know how many years because I'd had it in the closet somewhere. And I was looking for stuff to give away on Friday and I came across that magazine with me on the cover on my chopper and, and so forth. And I realized it was exactly 20 years. That picture of me is at my fattest uh, because of my uh, chemo and cancer treatments. In 2004, put me in a basic male menopause with 40 pounds gained of water weight, hot flash. God, you remember that, Pete? Hot flashes and flop sweats were just pouring. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. would just hit me in the middle of whatever. You know, I mean, it was it was uh, literally male menopause, and all kind of stuff was horrible. And it was, so, and that was at my fattest, gained all that weight, it was really fat and horrible, and also was the end of my uh, final marriage. Uh, which is ironically related, I guess, and uh, and that's why I'm on that chopper. And I had them build me a ch- they were a sponsor. Earl Smalls was a sponsor, and I had them build me a custom chopper with only one seat, because uh, from the cancer, the fatness, and the cancer, and the end of the marriage, and the, and it said, okay, and this is my single me from now on, and all that put together is all of a sudden really just hit me. To, oh my God, this is really a, a rather it's twenty years almost to the day of all this it's- kind of coming together. It's becoming clear why the chopper's engine died. Then, uh, yeah, it's dead. The engine's dead. The engine died. <laughs> like I, it's been sitting in my garage. I sold them. I uh, had my uh, police Harley. I sold that. Uh, I only lost. Uh, I think I only lost ninety percent on that one. <laughs> I should I should have looked at that those numbers <laughs> you before did. joining you in this business venture. Yeah, I spent. I, it was I, it was a police Harley David motorcycle, which I think I bought used from Earl Smalls for like nine grand, and I put thirty thousand or forty thousand dollars into it. It was custom motors and all this kind of paint job. The paint job was nine thousand dollars and something like that. And or no, it was eleven thousand dollars. Through the paint job, so I, I spent like fifty grand on that chopper, sold it for five five thousand dollars. <laughs> Obviously, I did not do my due diligence. Well, well this is we were going. I was going. I'm running out of money. We were this. We were all out of work for three years with all the damn, you know, all the crap going on, and the podcast wasn't doing anything. So I said, "I'll take five grand right now." And the guy bought it, and there goes my my heart. Anyway, uh, so the chopper thing and the engine died, and of course I'm not going to spend money. It would cost me ten grand to build that thing. But so anyway, but that, 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 I'm sorry, this is stupid, and I'm, I'm I feel like I'm embarrassed, and I'm an idiot. But again, just the power of that of that of those things all linked together, and the fact that it's dead, <laughs> the chopper is, it doesn't work. It's Oh, it's gone. It's dead. Uh, it's just uh, I, I'll, I'll just keep that stupid magazine because it would be silly to. I, I just it would. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It would, I don't know how, how I'd give it away. Anyway, sorry. I, so God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me. It's well. I know what's going. I know exactly what's going on with me, and and uh, it'll all be over soon. Uh, Three twenty seven. Kim or Pete and Flounder. Four zero four seven four one twelve thirty. Okay. Okay. Now the latest uh, on this uh, Baltimore business and the ship and the dock and the stuff. Apparently. That cargo ship was docked in Baltimore several days before it hit the bridge. And the reason it was docked several days before it hit the bridge, because it had severe electrical problems, according to the Daily Mail. Uh, the electrical problem days before, uh, the co-administrator of the container company that tracks cargo said the ship was anchored at the port for at least 48 hours. Now, why does this thing come up on my phone? It says swipe for the next story. I don't want to swipe for the next story. I want to read this story. And it's blocking off half the freaking print. Okay, and that says got it. If I hit got it, it's going to erase everything. I'm going to hit got it and see what happens. Oh, it disappeared. But why? Now, why would they do that? I'm reading a story and they deliberately blocked the freaking story. Focus. Focus. All right, all right. I mean, guy, you know, I mean, I mean, seriously. 
focus. <clears throat> I'm trying to pass along information to the little people, and they're blocking me from doing it. Well, just FYI, right in front of you, there's a computer. You can use that computer. <laughs> well, just I FYI. Peach, I got Pete's picture on the computer. I, how am I going to do that with Pete's picture on well, you there? You can flip over. Flip over what? Have, there's no way to you don't, what do you mean flip over. You don't have to see me 100% uh, I, there's the time. No, there's, well, well, okay, oh, I see it right here. It says flip over so you don't see Pete. There's a little dot right there. It says flip over right here. I couldn't mean flip over. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll flip over. Oh, oh, I see. Flip over by doing what? Over. I'll just. I'll flip something here. Oh, let me flip my pen. Here you go. Uh, oh, I flipped my pen. Oh, it didn't work. I'll be damned. Uh, what do you mean flip over? What the hell is that? What kind of direction is that? Flip over. Flip over what? <laughs> You know, I know I your name's this. on the show and everything, <laughs> but there are things happening in the world that you can talk about. All right, I'm trying to get there, and the stupid thing got the stupid thing. Uh, all right, those two days, this girl, I was, some girl was saying this. They were having serious little power outages. They had a severe electrical problem. It was total power failure, loss of engine power, everything. She said the refrigerated boxes tripped the breakers on board the ship on several occasions. Mechanics had been trying to fix it. She didn't know whether the problem had been fixed when the ship set off. Uh, the governor said the ship's crew notified officials had lost power. Uh, major problems are not really that common, according as a freak accident. But they should not have let, uh, some officials said they should not have let that ship leave port until they got it totally under control. Well, duh. Uh, by the way, Flounder, we have the sound of the. We have time to play that sound of the, uh, the uh, of the kind of the progression of the warnings that came in about what was going to happen and then what did happen uh, when the ship was coming toward that bridge. I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side. Hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching. I just lost their steering, so they tell you that under control. We gotta stop all traffic. Climbing route to the south side. Yeah, if we can stop traffic, just make sure no one's on the bridge right now. There's a crew up there. You might want to notify whoever the foreman is, see if we can get them off the bridge temporarily. 10 for Once the other unit gets here, I'll ride up on the bridge. C-13 dispatch. The whole bridge just fell down. Everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. Give me no fall traffic. We'll stop. I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. C-13, I'm holding all traffic northbound. Man. And you have to wonder, how come the crew couldn't get off? How come they couldn't get to the crew? There was no time to, I mean, there was no no warning whistles or uh, sirens or, I mean, and again, you there's know, no there's no watchtower at a bridge with cargo going through 24 hours a day. There's nobody in a tower like they are in Florida. Yeah. Every bridge system in Florida's got guys in a tower. It was like something on a movie, a couple of Godzilla movies ago, he went through the Golden Gate Bridge, and you're thinking, well, that yeah. could never happen in yeah. real life. Well, by the way, well, coming up, what it means to uh, these bridges, and also Marjorie Taylor Greene getting ripped for asking a couple of questions. I mean, they're turning on us in every possible way, plus a lot of Trump stuff. John Stewart, hypocrite on the uh, uh, after blasting Donald Trump on real estate. All coming up, uh, 331, give her Pete and Flounder right here. breaking news to the conservative voices you know and trust. Your best new follow on social media is Extra 1063. We're at XTRA 1063 on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, and LinkedIn, and pretty much any social media you scroll through every day. And we drop exclusive giveaways, new daily content, and the latest breaking news from Georgia and across this great nation. Interact with your favorite extra personalities. Get the latest on our live events and so much more follow at extra 1063 across all your social media and keep up with atlanta's only conservative voice buying a new car is about way more than just a car you want to love it and everything that comes with it and at subaru of gwinnett we get that you want to love the website easy to browse easy to shop and an unrivaled selection so you can find the model that suits you like the 2024 subaru outback crosstrek or Ascent, all offering impressive gas mileage, standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, and the tools to explore the things you love. You want to love the people, and know that every time you stop by the dealership on Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, they'll be there for you, ready to help in any way possible. And you want to love the service. We'll check that box for you also, because during the spring sales event, there's a lot to love. So stop in during the Subaru A Lot to Love event, and you'll find just that. 
a lot to love. Start your shopping online at SubaruofGwinnett.com and find the ride that best suits you. Because love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Subaru of Gwinnett, Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, and online at SubaruofGwinnett.com. It's a mad world out there, but one thing is certain, everyone is trying to market something. So tune in every Saturday at 3 p.m. to the Marketing Mad Men, who, along with a variety of industry expert guests, can help you make sense of it all. Whether you own a business and want tips to scale, or are a fan of the finer things in life and want to know how restaurants, golf courses, and wine companies try to sell you stuff, the Marketing Mad Men is your ultimate destination for all things marketing. Tune in right here on Extra 106.3 every Saturday at 3 p.m. or search online for more content. Join the madness with the Marketing Mad Men. Hey there, it's Tara, owner and publisher of Our Town Monthly, where you'll find familiar faces, local voices, and community businesses like JRM Management. Thanks, Tara. I'm Missy Miller, event coordinator at JRM Management. We are your event specialist. We are excited to see you at the Georgia Food and Wine Festival, March 21st through the 24th. We'll have food, beverages, cooking demos, live music, shopping, and more. Or maybe you're looking for an event where you can bring the entire family. Join us at the Marietta Community Egg Hunt, Friday, March 29th, and the Northeast Cobb Community Egg Drop, Saturday, March 30th. There will be multiple egg hunts by age and lots of kid-friendly activities. Also, look out for the Kennesaw Big Shanty Festival, the Smyrna Spring Donkle Festival, and of course, the North Georgia State Fair. There's always something fun happening in our community, and we want you to know about it. That's why we love our partnership with Our Town Monthly. You are so right, Missy. If JRM is there, the fun follows. Friends, check out all the exciting community events hosted by JRM Management. And remember, Our Town is your town at Our Town Monthly. Monthly. Baseball season is back. If too much celebrating leaves you in trouble after the game, it's important to know who to call. Call a Second Chance Bail Bonds. We handle bonds from the stadium to the city, and in most cases, we can have you or your loved one out in a matter of hours. A Second Chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call a Second Chance 24-7 at 404-BAIL-OUT. That's 404-BAIL-OUT. Or online at atlbail.com. At the Piedmont Bank, we're proud to be one of Georgia's largest community banks, focusing on serving businesses and the communities they serve. With headquarters right here in Metro Atlanta, our tailored banking expertise and solutions help meet the diverse needs of our customers so they have what it takes to grow, expand, and thrive. It's what elevates us above the rest. Find a location near you at Piedmont.Bank and experience elevated banking for you and your business. The Piedmont Bank. Banking elevated. Member FDIC and Equal Housing lender I don't look out here we go 335 oh Kim repeat and flounder here here we go we'll start singing David I don't think he's gonna sing for a minute here. yeah yeah anyway, there we go all right this is just not good music I'm sorry you're nuts. Oh, my God. What the hell is that? Classic. Huh? Classic. I know. I know. I'll shut up. This is one of the albums that put him on the map. I know. I'm sorry. I'll stop talking. Son? <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I just... Some cat from Japan? Is that what he said? I swear yep. to God. <laughs> yep. Uh, 20. <laughs> you just missed Snow that one. Man. Well hung, Snow White Jam. <laughs> Snow White <laughs> 2012, David Bowie's landmark album, Ziggy Stardust, celebrated with a blue plaque in central London. Spando Ballet star Gary Kemp unveiled a plaque at the spot where the cover of the 72 release was shot. The location in Hedden Street, just off of Regent Street, is now a pedestrianized area brimming with bars and restaurants, all because of Ziggy Stardust and David uh, the B-Man. Uh, around the birthday list includes uh, Polly Perrette. I've seen her face before. I'd never watched the show NCIS, but she was Abby for 15 years, the goth lab expert on NCIS. Polly Perrette is 55 today. Local girl. Oh, is she really? Yep. Uh, but I, I've seen her face. I know who she is, but well, I don't know who she is. I've, I've seen her as an actress, but I didn't. I, I did not. Well, congratulations to her, 55 years old. And on this day in 1987, after the success of the TV series Moonlighting, 
Bruce Willis got his first lead movie role, Blind Date with Kim Basinger. And then Bruce Willis's next film, that was 87, his next film was Die Hard. And, of course, wow. that went nuts. And then, and now, of course, uh, in fact, the other day, Neil Bortz, in fact, was it this Tuesday? It was yesterday. Was it yesterday? Uh, it was either, maybe it was, uh, was one of the times he was talking on the morning show. And he, uh, it was yesterday morning, and then it replay, they, uh, well, Neil Bortz calls in live Tuesday mornings around 725. And then Wednesday mornings at around 625, they replayed his segment on the radio, in case you missed it, at 730 the Tuesday before. And on that segment, Neil Bortz was, was mentioning how his younger sister, years ago, died from the same disease that Bruce Willis has right now. And he says it's horrible. He said he still has nightmares about it, and so he uh, he, he commiserates with the family that Br- what Bruce Willis is going through. He said his sister had it and died from it, and it was just brutal. Uh, and Neil uh, Neil Bortz's uh, sister many years ago. And I saw three thirty nine. And uh, Robert, hold on, we got a phone call, and we got some tickets. Good boy, we'll do it after five today. Maybe you want to do that? Is that okay with you guys, or what do you want to do? Sounds like a plan. Uh, okay, no. uh, to the phones, Roberts on uh, one zero six three with the camera, Pete and Flounder. Robert, how you doing, man? Welcome aboard. Yeah, doing doing good. I just wanted to say uh, something about your uh, your podcast, uh, <laughs> anemic uh, podcast uh, experience there, kind of thing. Yes, I'm I'm a, a long time uh, Kimmer fan. Kind of, I'm, I'm a retired pilot these days, a former Vietnam uh, Navy era kind of thing. And I I remember you from Earl Small. He was a Earl was a was a friend of mine. Uh, I used to, helicopter pilot. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, I yeah I used to talk to you out there sometime and yeah. some, sometimes and and really. Just absolutely thought your your show in the old days was was just an, uh, not only uh, a, a daily entertainment uh, treat, but it was uh, it was an integral part of, uh, of of all conservative life in in Atlanta. It was it was fantastic, and and when we yeah. lost you to the podcast, yeah. I don't know. I hate to say it, but I'm sitting here in front of my computer right now, uh, looking, uh, looking. I'm like a pig looking at a watch. I'm, I'm never really going to understand this kind of thing. And I, and I don't. I, I don't know what a podcast is. I, I know. No You're a pilot, for life. God's sakes, man. I know. I know. I, I, you know. I know. I know. Uh, I know north from south, from from east, and I know weather uh, patterns, and I know aerodynamics. But I know. That, you know I, the hell, if I if I can figure out the computer. So, I know, I know. It's true. It's, it's a whole I, new know, life. It's I, a new I mean, world. Yeah. There, there's a whole population of us out here who would have gladly paid five bucks a month or, or more yeah. to hear you, but we just didn't know how to do it. I so, know, I know. Uh, it, it, that it, is it. the sign of the times. That's <laughs> just my little input there. It wasn't you. It was the. Uh, it was just the times. So well, think. you're very kind to say right. so. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very grateful, Robert. And by the way, thank you, Vin Semperfy, to you, my friend. Aim high and uh, go Navy. And by and by the way, the sound of those freaking jets, I'll tell you, from Vietnam or anywhere else. The sound of those jets flying over is the sound of freaking liberty, my friend. And I salute you. The yes, sound of freedom the, right there every the time. The sound I, of freedom. And, and those who don't know that will, uh, I'm afraid, uh, very much afraid that in the future they will learn that at some point. Yeah. So, well, yeah. We're, we're still ready to fight. If they need us again, I know you and I will be there, Robert. And uh, right. it's, just, it's just the way the old folks like us think. Well, you're not as old as I am, but uh, folks oh, of a certain well, generation. <laughs> Listen, I'm, thank I'm you, right man. Here. Here, thank you. Creeping around. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Separate five three forty one. Well, that was nice. I really, I was really, I really was disappointed. I was really hoping. I thought we could do it. I thought we. It well, wasn't. We had, we had hundreds of thousands of listeners, and if we could gotten ten percent of them for five dollars, we could have made a hundred okay. grand or two hundred grand a year. Listening to a podcast is not splitting the atom. <laughs> I know. It's well, not that but people hard. who wants to do it? Who wants to go find out a thing and do a thing, and, and then it's not on every day at three or something. You have to go find it, and then you no, you, know, you when can you're find ready. it whenever you want. I know. You don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. I know. If you miss it, you missed it. I know. You can, you can listen to it any time you wanted. To I know. To but you it. have Just to like go. Ours, the replay we have now yeah. on Diggy Broadcasting yeah. at uh, what, what's it called? The yeah. Podcast Park. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime yeah, you, you want. Yeah. I know, I know, but he well, he was he was just being absolutely real. I know he's being honest, and, and, yeah. and with me too. I don't go out of my way to go find apps to do fine. You know, are you kidding? <laughs> you know, I got, everybody knows no. that. No, not when you can sit on your couch. And That's right. Go, Gosh, I wish I had the Netflix box. Well, you I know? could get that app or something on the new watch. You know, <laughs> watch football on my watch it's on Thursday. <laughs> 
Oh, I don't write know me anything check. anymore. Unbelievable. <laughs> I was going to write you. I brought <laughs> my write checkbook. <laughs> You can shove that checkbook. <laughs> this is so wrong. They should have fired me a long time ago. I'm, I have no. I'm used. I, I'm no. I'm, u- I'm obviously useless. I mean, I don't know anything. I honestly, I can't cope. I can't. I, I'm obviously, I'm, <laughs> I'm not capable of living in modern day America. <laughs> Who feeds you when you go home? Well, I have. To, I have one thing. I do the same. <laughs> blanking thing every night, so it's kind of hard to mess it up. <laughs> I mean, it's automatic. I walk in the door, honey, I'm home. I turn on the light, plug in my air flyer, take out the uh, frozen uh, potato pops and uh, the uh, chicken cowabungas, and I, eight minutes, 400 degrees, I turn out the TV up. Last I, can, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not hard. Oh, God. Anyway, all right, 340. What's the 344? God, I can't believe it. Um, uh, I'm more than that stupid bridge. Engineers are saying it was uh, had the structural flaw, and the reason is that bridge was built before new uh, contractor building codes with anti-collision devices like fenders or protection cells that were available in the 80s, and that bridge was built in 1977, so it didn't have what they call fenders or protection cells that were introduced later on, to, to, which would actually draw the ship away from the pier the part of it that would damage the pier and make it fall if the ship hit it. Uh, and by the way, apparently those uh, those big pillars are not in the way of Georgia bridges, so they, that kind of thing is unlikely to happen here because those pillars are not in the channel the same way they're built differently. Uh, but the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge had uh, did not have necessary structures to protect it against such a strike. Uh, and by the way, one of the uh, guys uh, in charge of this thing says, you know, it would really just be you have to build a castle underwater, basically, in the middle of the river to withstand a blow from a vessel like that. So there are some ways you can de- design a bridge to withstand the energy from a moving object as large as that. You can't design the bridge that, that'll make sure that it'll stay there if that ship hits it directly. But they have uh, navigation channels diverting ships from hitting the crucial piers. Uh, they also have uh, seafloor dredging, piling up material around the pier so the ship actually runs aground before it hits the structure part. Anyway, I mean, so I, again, the, the, the thing was built 50 years ago and didn't have the uh, uh, things that are available now. Uh, uh, 345. Coming up, they're blasting Marjorie Taylor Greene. Man, she, you know, if she says anything, they're going to they're gonna go get her. Also, uh, a lot more stuff on uh, President's stupid face. Uh, racist bridges. Wait to hear this. How to get out of your car if it hits in the water. And uh, social media is all over. Caleb Williams is all about that some more, too. And uh, the hypocrites and it all coming up. And Flounder's Funnies with Kimber Pete and Flounder at uh, 106.3. Out in September. We've got your afternoons covered, all right, and the morning extras got your drive in from 6 to 10 a.m., too. They continue to make Donald Trump stronger politically and richer. I find it absolutely hilarious that we sat there and said, you know, from day one, Carlos, guess what? Let them do a mugshot. It's going to empower him. Carlos says, hey, let them do these lawsuits. It's going to empower him. It's getting you him and stronger. I, we continue to talk about this and he gets stronger and stronger. Then you go, oh, you know what? What if we went ahead and try to take all his money? He goes, okay, well, then I'll just sell one of my properties or make it public and then become a billionaire and accumulate over $6 billion in a short amount of time. You're making them richer. You're making them stronger. You're the ones who continue to make them more powerful, and you give him all the TV time in the world. Why? Because you need him. The Morning Extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra app. All right, look out. 347, it's only me. It's only the Kimmer with Pete and Flounder. More action coming up, including what to do if your car goes in the water. 
And are you prepared in case it does all kinds of stuff here? And John Stewart got caught being a hypocrite and all, all kinds of good stuff coming up here, uh, including uh, why you should get to Atlanta Safe House. You know, I, uh, I'm telling you, your Social Security card does not belong in your wallet, and your medical records, in case you may need them later in life, uh, don't belong somewhere else other than your safe. And of course, if I had had a safe when I retired, went down to Florida from Atlanta Safe House. I had two up here. I bought two gun safes up here when I was here in Georgia. Didn't have my medical records uh, locked up safely. Couldn't find them. VA says, now nah, we're not going to talk to you about that kind of stuff. Even though you deserve it, we're not giving it to you. So it's my fault. I blew it. I screwed up. Keep your stuff. In fact, now and my kids know where my living will is and uh, stuff that happens if something happens to me and all the special stuff, things you want to save. Business safes, high security safes, jewelry safes, your cash, gun safes, pistol safes. And by the way, these things are always on sale. Great prices. There's a showroom in Ackworth for Atlanta Safe House. Stop by and see what they can offer you or on the web atlantasafehouse.com and you can see the products for you right there including some beautiful pistol safes which are a great idea to give everybody in uh, your immediate area a lot more uh, peace of mind and so forth especially if you're kind of a new gun owner and don't forget this is a non-woke company this is a constitutional love America company Jeff and Mark only use off-duty police firefighters and military to deliver that safe to you as a way of saying thank you to them for what they do also, number one delivery and installation crew, they can bolt that baby from the inside into your concrete floor, your game room or basement or garage or anywhere you want it. Please tell them the camera sent you. You'll love these guys. They really take care of you. And they keep you safe. All your stuff, keep it safe. AtlantaSafeHouse.com. Look, some choices in life are complicated. Others, thankfully, are much simpler. Like choosing true as one checking. There are no overdraft fees, lots of practical perks, and when your life evolves and account balances grow, we'll upgrade your perks automatically. Truest One Checking. One simple choice. Truest Bank. Member FDIC. True Prep on Cobb Parkway is your one-stop shop for emergency preparedness supplies, including freeze-dried food, water filtration, first aid, and more. They also have a large selection of firearms, including a huge selection of AR-15s, firearm accessories, and ammo at the lowest prices around. They are locally owned and operated. You can visit their store in Marietta on Cobb Parkway or online at trueprep.com. That's T-R-U-Prep.com. Prepare today for a worry-free tomorrow at True Prep. Hey Atlanta, it's Ben, host of the Weekend Ben Burnett Show, proudly brought to you by Peach State Pride. Each and every weekend, we bring you all the issues going on around the globe and what America's ultimate role is in order to drive our agenda forward as conservatives. And if you ever miss an episode, you can download everything I've ever done on Apple, Spotify, or you can go to the podcast park. See you around Atlanta. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors. But you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage, Entry Doors, and Windows. <laughs> Here we come. Ship ahoy, sailor. <laughs> Give her Peyton Flounder. 351. <laughs> 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 Was on this day in 2006, former Village People policeman Victor Willis was arrested in San Francisco after he disappeared from a drug and gun trial. Police had charged Willis with being in possession of cocaine and drug paraphernalia the summer before 2006. Uh, he would later be sentenced to three years probation. After he got into a treatment program, by the way, uh, speaking of the village people, it was on this day in 1794, President George Washington authorized the creation of the U.S. Navy, uh, which became the uh, forerunner of the village people, I think, as we all know. No, and, and salute to Tug, our morning guy, uh, with uh, the rhino and the smart one for Tug being a He's a swabby? Sailor, a former swabby, that's right. Yeah, and, and I think he was actually on ships. A lot of, I mean, a lot of people joined the Navy never got on a boat. 
you know, they, it's, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, working shore and stuff like that. And I think he was actually sailing. I think he actually went, went sailing. I can't imagine being on a big freaking ship. You know, they put like three thousand people on those things. I know, literally thousands in, in that book. I, I mean, and you're crammed in like sardines on top of it. No, I, I got a question. Yeah. Do they, do they store all, you know, the stuff and then dump it when they get back to port or do I, they dump oh, it they, in the ocean? I, I think they dump it right there when they, I think they flush it right out there in the water. Oh, God. And, and in fact, there were sea routes. In fact, that's one of the issues they have in all the sea routes because all the ships do the same thing. And if there's a sea route where they all go in the same area, that, that part is, you know, there's not a lot of wildlife growing there under the water, apparently. So there's uh, some issues of some kind. Anyway, uh, let's see. Our birthday, did I do a birthday? No, here we go. Oh, oh <laughs> the uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino, 61 years old. He exists to procure Oscars for Christoph Waltz. Christoph won Best Supporting Actor for Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained. And then it says here, too bad he didn't put him in the Hateful Eight for the three-peat. <laughs> By the way, Christoph Waltz is a very good actor. And those movies were great. Oh, it's funny, uh, if you like violence. Uh, but it's funny, every time Django Unchained is on BET, they edit all the N-words on BET. They edit. Django is all, I mean, you, you can't watch that movie if, it, if you take, I mean, that's the whole point. And BET, anyway, I just, idiots. Quentin Tarantino, 61. And I got one other thing I was going to do here for you, too, on history. Uh, 1980 on this day, several small rumbles and quakes, but on this day, Mount St. Helens erupted, sending a plume of ash and smoke over the state of Washington. Two months later, it erupted big time. Charlie destroyed homes, forests, affecting airline flights, killing dozens of people, including who knows how many that were never found. And that volcano in 1980 uh, really went nuts. Uh, 354, Flounder's Funny coming up in a second. Flounder, let's play. <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, former Mayor Pete, now the uh, Secretary of Transportation, uh, Pete Budafudge, has, uh, <laughs> not only has said in the past that roads are racist. They have to redo roads now because they were put into poor neighborhoods and they're of, of bad quality. Well, he's now saying the same thing about bridges. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design <laughs> choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality, and I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. So I guess all buses only had Hispanics and blacks in it. That's unbelievable. I it's mean, like, I, I get, that, that's their concern. No, no. It's like <laughs> we're going to say the stupidest things ever and see just how much BS we can throw out there that people will believe. It's un I mean, it's outrageous. I, I mean, seriously, they, they believe this stuff. They're, they're, they're trying to convince us of, us of this stuff. They literally designed, uh, they sat in the boardroom yeah. designing the underpants. Well, we got to keep those Hispanic kids from riding those buses over here. How are we going to do that? God. Uh, by the way, if, you're, <clears throat> if your car ever submerges in the water, uh, get the window down. And in fact, here's the problem. There's a big article about this now. You can look this up. You can Google it. They say 400 people a year drown in their cars in America. 400 a year drown in their cars. Uh, cars have side windows made of laminated glass, which is almost impossible to break. You should have in your car, and I made sure my kids have one in their car, one of those hammers, one of those car window breaking hammers or something like a hammer they break through a window. And also you should know, don't, you, you'll never get through your front windshield. That's laminated and it's, it's like almost bulletproof. Uh, but the other, the side, the passenger windows in particular are made uh, so that they are not laminated. They are tempered. And tempered glass will break. It'll break in small pieces so it doesn't hurt you, but it will break. The problem is, I don't know if you know what's, what windows on your car are tempered or not. They're, your headrest, for a lot of cars, you pull the headrest yeah, off has those two and it has spikes. those pointy ends yeah. on it. You the, can hit it. The two spikes come right out. Yeah, and that do it. And again, you should have, you know, I have, well, uh, if you don't have a gun, uh, you should also have, a, I've got knives with hard, sharp edges, you know, a K-bar Marine well, Corps knife and stuff. Remember the first Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher movie? Yeah, right, Where he right. goes out to the guys in the car and he's holding a salt shaker in his, his fist and he hits the, hit the, the window with the salt shaker yeah. in his fist and it just 
just yeah. explodes. Yeah. So anyway, but the key is get the window down and get the hell out through the window. Uh, and don't freak out. Uh, just get out. Get out through that window, and uh, and that's because uh, the water's going to come pouring in. But when you have the window down, get out, and that's how you can uh, escape the car. Yeah, you roll. Yeah, yeah, you roll it roll down. Roll down, then, or if you have if you have a roll window, if it's electric and then power's out, you're screwed. But in other ways, you got to crash it. Well, but don't try to open. Uh, well, you may not. You won't be able to open the door, uh, but you'll be able to, if you crack the window. You can when the water rushes in, you'll be able to get out with that too. Do we have time for a little flounder sing there, uh, flounder? Or are we too late? No, we got time. There we go. Pull here we for go. Nucky's Hoagies, our sponsor. Well, for holiday traditions like the Christmas tree, where we go out and we chop down a tree and we put it in our living room. Kind of sounds like the behavior of a drunk man, really. <laughs> Some woman wakes up. Honey, why is there a, a pine tree in our living room? I like it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna decorate it for Jesus. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to hang my socks over the fireplace. <laughs> Some people get so into Christmas, they decorate their yards. It seems completely backwards. All right, chop down that tree, bring it in here. Take all these lights, put them out there. Oh, I just got to, I really got to get a job. <laughs> He's anti-Christmas. <laughs> Easter, that's a weird tradition. Easter, the day Jesus rose from the dead, what should we do? How about eggs? <laughs> <laughs> well, what does that have to do with Jesus? All right, we'll hide them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow your logic. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a bunny. Yeah, and then a bunny brings him. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Who came up with the bunny? That's pagan. The the bunny is pagan. I mean, I mean that, yeah. that's not good, right? So is the egg. Yeah. By the way, just in time for Easter, get your Trump Bible right here. Hi, hi, oh, coming up hey. four o'clock. Ever Pete and Flounder. Ho, hi, oh. WFOM and W292EV Marietta, a Dickey Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Atlanta Safe House. from the White House. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. On day two of the search for six construction workers now presumed dead after the key bridge collapsed early yesterday in Baltimore. Work is undergoing to recover their remains and our thoughts and prayers are with their loved ones whose lives are never going to be the same. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg not giving any estimate on how long it will take to remove the cargo ship that hit the bridge and reopen the port of Baltimore. The NTSB is reviewing the black box from that cargo ship as well as interviewing the people on that ship, trying to piece together what happened the moments before it collided with the bridge. The next step is cleanup and rebuilding, trying to get the Baltimore port open, the bridge debris cleaned up, and a new bridge rebuilt because the people that live here depend on it. Fox Business' Hillary Vaughn in Baltimore. It's also a global problem with the port serving as a critical lifeline for the coal and auto industries, GM and Ford rerouting their cars and trucks, many other businesses facing the same issue. The U.S. isn't giving up its push for a new ceasefire and hostage deal between Israel and Hamas. We remain hopeful that we can, break, we can broker a deal to secure the release of hostages and establish a temporary ceasefire. This is something that we've been asking for some time. White House spokeswoman Karine Jean-Pierre also says there is an agreement for Israel Israeli officials to come to Washington and discuss military plans in the city of Rafah. It's being rescheduled after the prime minister canceled a delegation this week when the U.S. allowed a U.N. Security Council resolution calling for a Gaza ceasefire to pass. Prime Minister Netanyahu says that encouraged Hamas to take a hard line and he pulled the delegation to send a message that international pressure won't work. Netanyahu meeting today with U.S. senators in Jerusalem, including Lindsey Graham, who calls destruction of Hamas battalions in Rafah non Negotiable. A rally on Wall Street, the Dow up 478 at the Bell. America is listening to Fox News. 
The waves were mighty and fierce as could be When my lady and I got lost at sea We tossed and turned and we nearly drowned When my brave little boat went down huh. Whoa, 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 no, none of that's true You have another date in a year or two The sea was calm and the sky was clear And you crashed right into the pier Yeah, fine Accidents don't just happen in sea shanties So Progressive Boat Insurance has you covered Take as little as four minutes to see what you can save at Progressive.com Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Covered subject to policy terms and not available for all boats or in all situations Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. Ruff, ruff. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, what's the name of this street? Oh, sorry. Got no name. Ah, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. 1987, baby. You too. Bum, bum. This was the day they got on top of that store in downtown L.A. and made the video for Where the Streets Have No Name. Thousands of spectators showed up. Again, they were on top of a store. Cops showed up and said, no, no, no. <laughs> Good, get out of here. <laughs> they had to stop shooting. <laughs> 1987. <laughs> What's all this then? Yeah, you people are going to have to. <laughs> what the hell is going <laughs> to Can you imagine a cop show? All of a sudden, there are guys on top of a store playing music, and there are 10,000 people blocking everything. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Where the streets have no name. You too. Ah, mercy. It's, Give her Pete and Flounder. How you doing? What's that? It's like the end of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I don't know if you remember the end. Where King Arthur and his knights are finally going to storm the castle. And right as they do, the cops show up and go, Whoa, 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 what's all this in? <laughs> Stop what do you it. think you're doing? <laughs> Not a lot of here. <laughs> Bring it up. <laughs> and they arrest them all. Oh, <laughs> Uh, 404 with a Kimber, Pete, and Flounder. 404-741-1230. Our birthday list includes Fergie. My humps, boom, boom, pow. Fergie-licious, big girls don't cry. Uh, Fergie's 49 today. So, uh, okay. Yeah. That's a little thing. What's that big song they had when she was with the group? Big girls uh, don't cry? Pump it. Pump it. Um, I, boom, boom, pow. Well, when she was with that group, uh, they did Girls? a song called Pump It. No, no, the uh, the group, the Black, uh, rap group. Black, oh, Eyed, Black Eyed Peas. I'm sorry. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. And, and her little bit where she sings is one of the sexiest voices ever heard oh in a song. Oh, my God. Well, Flounder, I believe we're going to have to try to find that for you here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, this was Black Eyed Peas. Was... You don't remember the song? Pump it. Oh, pump it. Okay. Do we, I, I don't remember that offhand. While we, while we uh, see if we can find that for you. 405. And our um, uh, history list includes 1904 on this day. The original Mother Jones was told to take a hike and don't come back. Her real name in 1904, Mary Jarris Jones, called Mother Jones. She was a troublemaker who kept stirring up the coal miners to demand better working conditions. So state authorities in Colorado... Ordered her to leave the state and don't come back. I guess you could do that in 1904. <laughs> Pretty clearly. 406. And our 4 o'clock hour is brought to you by our good friends at Atlanta Safe House. Home of the Kimmer Safes. Uh, they have a showroom in Ackworth. You need a safe. If you don't know what you do, I trust me, I'm a good example of why you need a safe. Learn more by going to atlantasafehouse.com. Also, we have tickets giveaway in, five, in the 5 o'clock hour, sometime after 5. Two tickets to the Broadway and Atlanta show. Uh, play, uh, one of the great plays of all time, To Kill a Mockingbird. And we have two tickets for opening night, Friday night, May 7th. Two tickets, not now, but uh, in the 5 o'clock hour. We'll give those away for you, too. And uh, let's see, 406, can repeat and flounder, 404-741-1230. Real quick, we got Rick yeah. the Painter on. He's got an Easter joke for us. I, well, I, what better time than this week to have an Easter joke with Rick the Painter? Hello, Rick, you're on the radio. What's up? 
Hey, Brother Kimmer, hey, also, uh, a.k.a. retired Rick the Painter. Ah, but, you know, congratulations. Hey, Outstanding. Thank, thank you, sir. Hey, uh, you were talking about Easter, and I know you cook a lot. You do a lot of baking and things I'm like a, that. And, oh, I'm a cooking so, baker, yeah. Well, if you, let me ask you, if you're going to do any baking and Easter cookies this weekend, yeah. what kind of flour should you use? Uh, gold medal flour, I would bet. So, well, why, what do you think? Self-rising flour. Self rising flat, self rising, <laughs> rising. Oh, he was rise, rising from the. Oh, well, oh, yeah, there. I oh, wrecked the pa- Hey, yeah. oh, self rising yeah. flower. My, my joke doesn't seem so bad now, does it? No, it doesn't feel that bad at all. No, <laughs> thank you, Rick. Adamant. By the way, do you, have, <laughs> uh, do you have any problem with Donald Trump getting together with Lee Greenwood and helping to sell a $60 patriotic Bible in time for Easter? <sighs> Oh, please. Well, uh, Donald Trump says, Happy Holy Week. Let's make America pray again. As we lead into Good Friday and Easter, I encourage you to get a copy of the God Bless the USA Bible. Um, All Americans need a Bible in their home. I have many. It's my favorite book, Trump said. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Yeah, I I see, I don't like that (laughs) part where you got to make America pray again. You don't make people pray. I know, but he didn't, I don't think, you know, it's make America great again. It was just a joke, make America great again, make America pray again. So it wasn't like we're going to force you to pray, damn it. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, I I think that's a little overboard of reaction. But you're right, I mean, you're you're, you're right. I mean, it's legit. I mean, that's that's you know the criticism of it, which is legit. But this, not, you know, he said the the website. He says list of books is the only Bible inspired by America's most recognized patriotic emblem. God bless the USA. Uh, that will feature the United States Constitution, Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Pledge of Allegiance, as well as a handwritten chorus of God Bless the USA, according to the website, in the Bible. It's ha- it has easy-to-read, big, large print, a slim design, and was designed to deliver an easy reading experience in the trusted King James Version translation. Uh, Trump is also at 60 bucks, along with Lee Greenwood, the singer who's uh, endorsed it, or I guess it's his. And uh, Mr. Trump is also selling $400 gold sneakers. <laughs> really? It's funny, which is fine. I, again, I have uh, one of those, I, I, can't, I, it's called, I guess it's called a working Bible. I can't remember the official name, but it's a translation Bible of what they actually mean with the, you know, with the written word of the, in the biblical language. And it's really... Uh, it's great. It's very helpful, and and I'm, I'm I, I I got it. I've had it for probably forty years, and it really yeah. is a, a, exceptional. I told you before the best Bible I read was in a hotel room in Philadelphia. We were up there for a Falcons game, and I called when I got back home. I called the hotel and said, "What's the name of that Bible?" So I'm going to buy it, and they, she says, "No, no, no. We'll send it to you." And they yeah. just mailed it to me. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, 410, 410, Kevin Pete and Flounder, how's it going? 404 741 1230. Oh, speaking of Donald Trump, and of course he's on trial, he had the overinflated value of his property, Mar a Lago, and all that kind of stuff, supposedly, yada, yada, yada. Well, John Stewart had a really good time blasting Donald Trump. Uh, and John Stewart reacted the other night when there was an expert on uh, interviewing the Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary, who said that the uh, the finding against Donald Trump and, they all, and the half a billion dollar bond and they finally got appealed is that. That ruling's not going over well with the real estate industry that was fretting over the possibility of being the next target because it's a victimless crime. Well, John Stewart said, how is he not this mad about overvaluations in the real world? Because they're not victimless crimes. They said money is not infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. He said, he's failing to declare a higher market value on your property while paying taxes based on the lower value is fraudulent behavior. (laughs) And now the rest of the story. In 2014, John Stewart had his uh, financier uh, friend buy his Tribeca duplex, which John Stewart had assessor records obtained by the uh, New York Post showing that his property was market valued at $1.8 million. The actual assessor valuation was even lower at $850,000, and yet John Stewart listed it for $17 million, and that's what he got for it, and the guy who bought it tried to turn it around and resold it and lost 30%. He took a beating over it. 
He got like $13 million for it. And so John Stewart obviously committed fraud when he sold his penthouse for $17 million, listing the market value at one8 that's an 800% increase of the value of the property. And he's complaining about Donald Trump? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Here we go. Unbelievable. 412. These people have no soul. I mean, honestly, they're just phonies. They're liars and phonies. We'll see. They're just the gaslighting. You'd think that they would explode. Just from the internal combustion. They must, they must, be, and they must feel that waking up in the morning must be a nightmare for these people. God. Anyway, that slimy little pus sucker, Jamie Raskin, uh, that Democrat pimp from uh, Maryland, is at it again. He's now demanded that House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer investigate Jared Kushner. Yeah, he says that Jared Kushner there, you know, a former White House advisor and Donald Trump's son-in-law. Uh, he says he was uh, in business with people with a foreign companies and we he's been shielding from everything and we want him investigated for influence peddling and quid pro quo deal by Trump's son-in-law. Well, uh, Jared Kushner, uh, says Mr. Chairman of the party, uh, Jared Kushner has legitimate business deals, has a career as a business executive, predates Donald Trump's political career. Uh, the Democrats' latest letter is part of a playbook to shield President's stupid face from oversight. Again, these people will not stop. They're now complaining that they need to go after Jared Kushner because they hate Jews. Well, uh, Jared Kushner's Jewish. Donald Trump has a Jewish son-in-law and a Jewish daughter who b became Jewish for her husband. And so, and now these Democrats, uh, that slimy little pus sucker, that uh, Jamie Raskin, God, I hate that little pimp, uh, is now trying to uh, have an investigation. And of course, Comer says, go pound sand, you climb head. And by the way, Hunter Biden's in court in California today trying to get the charges dropped against his uh, case where he didn't pay any taxes on all the money he got from the uh, communists over in Ukraine. Anyway, 414 already. Holy cow, Kimber Pete and Flounder on 106.3. My goodness. Time for the Bortz Report, brought to you by Southern Exteriors, the Southeast's premier home exterior solution. Quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Visit southernexteriors.co. Sometimes it only takes about one sentence for a presidential aspirant to tell you what they're all about. Hillary Clinton did it when she said we have to stop worrying about the rights of individuals and start worrying about what's good for society. And now it's Michelle Obama's turn. Okay, I know she says she doesn't want to be a candidate. That's out of respect to Joe. If Joe has to step out, look for Michelle. And what is her one statement? Someone is going to have to give up their piece of the pie so that others can have more. How do you feel about that statement? Now, Michelle and her husband, $12 million home, Martha's Vineyard, $9 million home, Hawaii, $8 million home in Washington, and a $2 million cottage in Chicago. Which piece of her pie does she want to give up? Here's Michelle telling you her basic philosophy. No matter how smart, no matter how hard, how long you work, to accumulate your pie, you're just going to have to give up some of it so that other people can have more pie. Doesn't that sound suspiciously like from each according to their ability to each according to their needs? Here's Big Mike telling you, no matter how hard you worked, how long you worked, how good your decision-making process was, you're just going to have to give up some of it so that people that didn't work or wouldn't work as hard as you can have some of it. Do you like that as a philosophy of government? Now, what Michelle does not understand or won't admit to is that if you want bigger pieces of the pie, you bake a bigger pie. You create an economy that allows everybody to grow. The bake a bigger pie people usually conservatives, Republicans, the divide up the pie we already have, Democrats, gotta love them, Neil Bortz, 
Extra 106.3. Hey, homeowners. Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit southernexteriors.co now. Southern Exteriors quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years intelligent technology that's more intuitive electrified power wrapped in sporty elegance meet the 2024 mercedes-benz c300 sedan the leader of the pack with a sensual interior the c300 sedan is a driver's delight and paradise for passengers experience the 2024 c300 sedan today lease one for just $4.99 per month for 36 months with $44.93 due at signing exclusively from rbm of atlanta in sandy springs contact rbm of atlanta for details on this vehicle and many other models visit today to see how to qualify special lease rate available only to qualified customers exclusively from mercedes-benz financial service through rbm of atlanta sandy springs through april 1st 2024 excludes tax tag title and georgia lemon law fees. Contact RBM of Atlanta for details on this and other exciting offers. Visit rbmofatlanta.com or call us at 770-390-0700 for details. Hey homeowners, Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit southernexteriors.co now. Southern Exteriors, quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Hey, it's front office lows for underdog fantasy. The NBA season is still here and there's no easier way to get in on all the action than with underdog fantasy and their pick em game. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real money. It's easy. Pick two to five players from at least two different teams. Select higher or lower on the player's stats and if your pick hits you can win up to 100 times your money it's legal in georgia and it's a ton of fun to play as you can watch the atlanta hawks stop playing against the pros night in and night out with their hundreds of different lineups it's just you against the stat it's that easy underdog fantasy is even easier to get started go to their easy to use mobile app or to underdogfantasy.com sign up and use the promo code los and underdog will match your first deposit up to 100 plus they'll give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick of entry. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code LOS, L-O-S, to get your first deposit of 10 or more matched plus your special pick. Must be 18 and present in state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. In terms of your play, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. Ah, yeah. Chicks, man. They make you write music for them. And then they turn around and turn... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, 420, Kim repeat and flounder. Everything's going to be fine with Eric Clapton. This was the day, 1979. Eric Clapton married George Harrison's ex-wife, Patty Boyd. She inspired Clapton's songs, Layla and Wonderful Tonight, and Harrison's classic Beatles hit, Something. Eric Clapton married George Harrison's ex, Patty Boyd. They got, uh, that was in 1979. Patty applied for a divorce in 1988. And the honeymoon was over. <laughs> so away she go. <laughs> she, she's written a uh, biography that I have yet to get around to reading it, but people say it's very nice. <laughs> oh, it is nice. Oh, really? Yeah. It could have been the other way, I think, if she didn't want no, it. No, no, I mean nice by you want to read it. Oh, she, really? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Bet, I'll bet so. Can you imagine? What a life she led. Oh, my God. The Beatles and Eric Clapton in the to- that time in the oh. 70s and 60s. Uh, and she met George when she was 16 when they were filming <laughs> A Hard Day's Night. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Da, 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 da. All right. Our birthday list includes Talissa Soto, 57. It says here, Puerto Rican Chica and Fuego. I don't know what that means. Chica means chick, I guess. So, and Fuego means girl, yeah. you're totally girl on fire. You'll, you'll, oh, she's a, a fiery chick, a girl on fire. Okay, mm-hmm. Talisa Soto, a 57 Puerto Rican girl on fire, former Bond girl from License to Kill, and Princess Katana 
maybe Catania, probably, in the Mortal Kombat movies. I don't know uh, that one. I can't remember. A license to Kill. I think I remember her. Uh, she had uh, short, uh, uh, short dark hair. I think I think I remember her face. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, let's see. Uh, history, history. 19... Oh, we got Martin coming up. Hold on, Martin. 1909, Scotland Yard, uh, the first to use fingerprints. They uh, Scotland Yard had the first fingerprint bureau, and they were the world's first when it really counted because fingerprints on this day in 1909 were used for the first time to solve a murder case. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and Martin's on the phone. Martin, you're on the radio with Kevin Pete and Flounder. Man, how's it going? What's up? I'm good, Tom. Yes, sir. So, talk, to, talk to me. How is it all of these climate change or global warming or whatever <laughs> you want to call it today? Yeah. Uh, fanatics uh, wailing around in their private jets. Yeah. With seaside properties yeah. didn't have the foresight to realize with global warming, the uh, ice caps melting, yeah, yeah. those seaside properties are going to be underwater rather quickly, you aren't know, they? That's a, the first thing I can't be. Every time I hear when Bortz was talking about that, every time I you know yeah. having a putty tat with you know Barack was saying putty tat with his Martha's Vineyard estate, I'm thinking my, you know you know, and he was the one to complain it's going to be underwater by 2027 or something, it'll be eight feet underwater or something. I mean, all, all of their properties, and of course, you know, they're the first ones to buy the $12 million in Hawaii on the beach and stuff. I mean, it's just... No. If, 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 if Jim, Jim, it's like we have reproduce me stamped on our forehead. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, really, how stupid do they think we are? I mean, seriously. It's, they say this stuff, and, and they say it often enough, and people go, oh, yeah, well, boy, I guess we're really in for it. By 2032, we're all going to be underwater. <laughs> You know, he says yeah. his balcony at Martha's Vineyard. Anyway, All right, <laughs> thanks, <floaties>. thanks, Martin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, mercy. Four zero four seven four one one two three zero. And again, NBC News. Shame on NBC News. Can you believe? I mean, I, I do believe it. It's typical. It figures. The home wreckers, Mika and Joe. Uh, that scuzz bag, Chuck. Todd, who actually had a fundraising party for Hillary Rodham Peace Stinky Fart Cabbage at his place years ago. And he complained about having a conservative. And by the way, Ronna McDaniel is probably the least offensive so-called conservative spokesperson they could get on the network. I mean, she's, well, you know, she's not exactly a rabble-rousing right-wing, you know, white supremacist or something, you know? Jeez. And, of course, she, she, she did one interview, and now they're going to have to pay her for two years $600,000. And, and but here's the memo. This is this is absolutely backwards and absolutely disgusting from Universal NBC News Group Chairman Cesar Conde. Quote: There is no doubt the last several days have been difficult for the news group. After listening to the legitimate concerns of many of you, I have decided that Ronna McDaniel will not be an NBC News contributor. Uh, he acknowledged McDaniel's hiring had undermined the goal of a cohesive and aligned newsroom. I want to personally apologize to our team members who felt we let them down. While this was a collective recommendation by some members of our leadership team, I approved it and take full responsibility for it. Our initial decision was made because of our deep commitment to presenting our audiences with a wide, diverse set of viewpoints and experiences particularly during these consequential times. We continue to be committed to the principle that we must have diverse viewpoints on our programs, and to that end, we will redouble our efforts to seek voices that represent different parts of the political spectrum. Unquote. What a lying scum! He just, he just lied to himself. Exactly the opposite of what he just said. We need more diverse viewpoints. You just fired your diverse, <laughs> diverse viewpoints. Just complete liars. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, oh seriously, my, my head's exploding. When, I, we knew it was going to happen, but he actually has the balls to come out and say, I apologize, I've offended my own staff, and we really need to get some diverse viewpoints in here. So that's why we fired the diverse viewpoint. I mean, seriously. I, 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 and by the way, Rhonda McDaniel found out by f hearing it on the news. <laughs> she hasn't heard anything from them yet. <laughs> oh, she should sue their, their pants off. She should sue oh their pants off. Oh, my God. But again, the balls on these people.
And Rachel, Rachel Maddow, I mean, all Rachel Maddow, who works one day a week, one night show a week for $30 million. Well, that's the problem, Kimber. They don't have balls. God. <laughs> I mean, how, I mean, this is NBC. This is the Peacock Network. This is the old red and blue radio networks. This is I one know, of the my favorite. <laughs> this was the original voice of sanity. I mean, Huntley Brinkley. I mean, and those are modern guys from the fifties and sixties. But going back to the original red and blue radio networks, the starting of broadcasting. God, Edward you know, R. This, Murrow uh, and those guys would be going uh, nuts right now. J.T. Kaltenborn Bro- and those guys? Tom Brokaw doesn't say a word about this God. in their business. Not a word. Not a peep. Didn't he die? No, I thought he's still with us. I think Maybe Tom that's Brokaw's why he's not dead. talking because he's dead. I think he's dead. I think Tom Brokaw died. Didn't he die? No. Yeah, didn't he die? Start, he's, it, oh, no, it was Peter Jennings. Uh, started smoking again during the Olympics and died of lung cancer. He had quit smoking, yeah. and he got so overworked that during the Olympics, he started smoking again, and it killed him. He said he started smoking again, and son of a bitch, he got lung cancer. After quitting yeah, for many he ain't years, dead. Tom Bro. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess he's. I was thinking of Peter Jennings. Uh, yeah, where's he? Well, he's probably. You know, he's got to be 90, so he probably doesn't care one okay, way or the other. Okay, he's 60. He's 84. Yeah. Well, he's. He may not even know about it. I don't know what he's doing. But I mean, this is just a. Fa- it's it's shameful. It's offensive. It's anti-American. And again, these are the people who who bring the news into your homes all day, every day. And they are saying, oh, well, we, we can't have that kind of person on here because she worked for Donald Trump. Who, she tried to change the election. Who wrote that for him? Yeah, I know. Did he write that himself and use the word diverse? No. Knowing no. full well it's the exact opposite of the meaning, yeah. what he just did? And he also called it uh, legitimate concerns of many of you. Collective recommendation. I mean, wide, diverse set of viewpoints and experiences. Particularly these consequential times, which is exactly the opposite of what you've done. You're milk toasting everything from a liberal point of view during these consequential times, which is exactly the wrong time to do it. The same way the FBI director said, well, I didn't want to tell him the laptop was real because we were having an election and we didn't think it was fair to have, you know, talk about election stuff. That's exactly when you should say something's real or not real. My God. You want to hear something interesting? In 1939, when World War II started and Hitler invaded France and everything and England declared war on him, you know, you know Mein Kampf, Hitler's yeah. little screed? Yeah, that he wrote it, in prison, as I recall. Yeah, while the Nazis were burning books in England, they were printing more copies of Mein Kampf. It became a bestseller. Why? Because they believed in knowing your enemy and you needed to know exactly what this little runt was up to. So they actually sold more copies of it after the war started. They did the opposite of yeah. what the Nazis did, right. which is basically hide the information. And what the Democrats are doing. The Democrats are the modern day Nazis. They are censors. They don't want you to know things. They're a one party system. They will do yep. anything, including Ford. How about, what is it, 98 felony counts that would get Donald Trump 800 years in prison if conduct, uh, convicted yeah. on all these things cool. to get rid of their opponent? Well, I don't think they're Nazis. I think they're Marxists. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're, uh, yeah. And again, uh, here we go from the left. Uh, uh, Mike uh, uh, Luck Hates America, Vich, has a cartoon today that shows an American soldier in a war w- with battle gear and a rifle and a helmet says, Fighting Fascism in 1944. Then the next picture is an old man in a wheelchair voting, and it says, Voting against GOP 2024. <laughs> We're voting against you. We're voting against what you've done to our country. Co- Does anybody really think we're better off now than we were? Four years ago? Seriously. In any category. Any category. <laughs> 430, repeat and flounder, my lord. The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Tug, and here's what you missed from the Talkmaster. All wealth is held by individuals in this country. All of it. That means that all taxes are paid by individuals in this country. Corporations do not pay taxes. They collect the money from their customers, from their employees, 
and from their shareholders and pass it on to the government in the form of corporate income taxes. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3 or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Hey, sandwich lovers, today's your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corners Shopping Center. Now open, Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacey and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. Is the tax deadline causing you anxiety? Searching for elusive 1099s and trying to uncover any exemptions? If so, you're not alone. Every year, Georgians find themselves looking backwards to file with the IRS, reporting tax history. But what if you were to flip the script? Not just report your taxes, but actually planning for them. We're Master Plan Retirement Consultants. We're local with offices in Marietta. We work with folks just like you to create a personalized, tax-efficient strategy designed to last a lifetime, a crucial piece to the holistic retirement plan. Do you have a retirement roadmap? You should. It's never too late. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Don't wait any longer. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants Inc., a registered investment advisory in the state of Georgia. Insurance, tax, and commodity services offered through Frickson Associates Inc., DBA Master Plan Retirement Consultants. The aforementioned are affiliated companies. Pack your bags and join the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets football team in Dublin, Ireland as Toby Slather to kick off the 2024 football season in Dublin. The Erlingus College Football Classic will feature your Yellow Jackets versus the Florida State Seminoles in a special Week Zero matchup on August 24, 2024. Don't miss this unique opportunity to visit one of the world's most popular travel destinations while cheering on the Jackets on a global stage. For travel packages, tickets, and more information, go to gt2ireland.com. Sting them. The Braves are back for the 2024 season and ready to fight for their seventh consecutive division title. Don't miss the opening homestand against the Arizona Diamondbacks April 5th through the 7th, followed by the New York Mets April 8th through the 11th. And on April 8th, the Braves will honor the 50th anniversary of Hank Aaron's record-breaking 715th home run with a special Hank Aaron bobblehead giveaway together with Truist. Visit Braves.com slash promos to get your tickets today. Atlanta Braves baseball. We are Braves country. And I was there. I was there way up high in the stands with my starter wife, my favorite ex-wife, the one who loved me, and a guest that I got a ticket for who I'm not talking about because he was rude to me when he came back into town and he denied that he ever knew me when I got him a ticket to go watch Hank Aaron hit that home run. And it was cold and kind of dry. It wasn't raining. It was just kind of wet, uh, kind of misty. And uh, his first at bat or so, we, we stayed and we said, gee, man, it looks like it's not going to happen. And then over it went, just barely cleared the wall. And man, I've never to this day heard a louder noise in my life in person that I heard that night when he hit that home run. Anyway, Carlos Santana here, 1973 this day. Rolling Stone magazine said that after becoming a disciple of Sri Chinmoy, I don't know what that is, Carlos Santana had changed his name to Devadip, which means the lamp of the light of the supreme. All right, sir. Sri, S-R-I, Sri Chinmoy. If my music sucked that bad, I'd change my name, too. Yeah, just, uh, wow. Whew. Uh, birthday well, list. Overrated. Oh, wowie. Yeah, I don't, I just, I didn't, you know, it's just noise in a track of kind of a deal. Anyway, whatever. Again, I don't know anything, so don't uh, listen to me. Mariah Carey is either 54 or 55, <laughs> depending on which source you go to. Her first number one hit, 1990 debut single, Vision of Love. I don't remember that. The last one of her songs to hit number one was in 2008. With Touch My Body, Maria, Mariah Carey, 54 or 55. And on uh, this day in history, in 1860, M.L. Bine patented in 1860 the corkscrew. And in 1866, Andrew Rankin patented the urinal. <laughs> By the way, you got to give credit to the guy who invented the toilet. I mean, think about it. 
Somebody had to say, well, we need a place where you can, you know, do your, you know, and uh, uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And by the way, how is it? How would how would anyone even think that if you're on the 15th floor of a building, that the water somehow is able to flow up to the 15th floor to be able to do uh, wash your hands and take a shower and everything else? I mean, the whole you, the whole system of water flowing to the world is to me is just freaking amazing. Hey, really? Can you imagine in the 1700s convincing people that people should do their business in in, indoors? Yeah, in in the house. I'm not. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Uh, 436, how's it going? Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder at 1063. Here's the number, 404-741-1230. 404-741-1230. Uh, 5 o'clock, we'll give away tickets to go see the opening night, May 7th, a Friday night, at the Fox, beautiful uh, the Fox Theater, To Kill a Mockingbird, the Broadway in Atlanta presentation. And we'll do that after 5 o'clock sometime. Not now, after 5 o'clock. Um, and we're very excited about... Oh, yeah, today, just a quick thing. And I'm going to talk to you about trannies and... And phonies and fakes and stuff like that, and uh, P. Diddy's latest thing here too, and a cop who's got it right. Uh, but for just very quickly, the, I put a little video on this morning. I was going, I've been looking through stuff to give away when we have our appearance at uh, Nucky's Hoagies on Friday, doing our show there live in Roswell, three to six Friday. And so I'm, 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 I got some little trinket stuff I've had over the years. I'm kind of giving away, and among other, I was looking through stuff, and I found my ninth grade yearbook. And I put that, <laughs> I took a little video, put that on Facebook, and it had, you know, all the notes from the kids in your class when you when you would say goodbye for the summer, and they were all kind of making fun of me because I was going to prep school uh, for the rest of my high for my high school years, uh, and so and stuff like that, and uh, and it reminded me. And then the other thing, I, I, I this is really touching, and, and I, I, by the way, it showed me <laughs> with my with my glasses and my crew cut, and uh, you know, and, in fact, my parents were so old fashioned and conservative that I. When they found out it was going to be picture day, they bought me a suit with a vest to wear for picture day. And that's so, and that's what you're seeing on the the ninth grade thing on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but also, I, this was kind of cool. Um, I, fe- I was feeling very melancholy uh, earlier today because among the things I was going through in my area where I have all my stuff uh, was uh, uh, my mother's scrapbook. Which I haven't seen in uh, God years and years and years of me the scrapbook that she kept of me everything I'd ever done to made the paper or n- announcements and stuff from the time I was born, including all the letters I wrote home from college, and all the letters I wrote home from Vietnam, and she kept them all. Yeah, that's just uh, wow. I don't. Th- I, I wonder if people do. I'll, I'll bet people. I don't know if people do that kind of thing anymore. That, that's, that's kind of an older gen- World War II generation thing, I think. My mom kept all my dad's letters that he had written to her while he was in Vietnam. Yeah, I, I, I think and after, that's... And after she passed, he found him in the room when he was cleaning stuff. Oh, God. That would make me my, cry. My grandfather, and I found these a few years ago, wrote to his mother like every wow. week for years back in the 1920s. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was really that was really uh, uh, really touching. And again, I'm, you know, so that just and, and again, I was I mentioned the reason I'm thinking about this is I, I've decided I'm not going to I'm not going to give away that uh, magazine of me on the cover of them with a, my chopper on the uh, motorcycle magazine because it's too <laughs> it's, it has too much of a stupid thing. And I'll just keep it in case anybody else wants it. I gave a copy to Jennifer; she's got one. But anyway, so but I, I, I give a lot. Of, Friday, if you show up, uh, and again, it's not a big deal. And don't you know? Don't make a hundred mile drive because it's not. I'm not giving away stuff that's worth anything at all. You know, t-shirts and a couple of hats and uh, some coins and thing, you know, a challenge coin, stuff like that. Just, just if you stop by to say hi, stuff like that. So, anyway. Uh, and we'll do the show 3 to 6. Alright, 440, can repeat and flounder. And here we go, California. We're talking about wokeness. Here we go again. Check this out. The Sacramento, uh, Sacramento, California chapter of the Democrat Socialists of America is now endorsing the measure before the Sacramento City Council to declare Sacramento a sanctuary city for transgender people, including minors. It would protect medical professionals who perform gender transition surgeries on little children. It would protect those doctors or medical people from any attempts to impose criminal punishment, including protecting them against civil lawsuits or subjugation to out-of-state laws that restrict what they do in Sacramento. 
This is two years after Governor Newsom, the worst governor of the worst state, uh, passed a law declaring the Golden State a sanctuary state for cha- uh, transgender children, preventing criminalization of medical professionals who carry out their transition surgeries uh, to minors. Maine's trying to st- uh, declare their uh, state a sanctuary state for trannies. Of course, uh, some state Idaho, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Alabama, Florida made it a felony to do this kind of thing on children, sex changes on kids, minors, or give them gender transition drugs too. But again, California, as and now Sacramento, is a, 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 a safe city for trannies, including children. If you if your nine year old runs away from home and runs to goes to Sacramento and says, "I want to be a girl," they'll chop off his penis. And you will not be able to stop them, and you will not be able to sue them, and you will not be able to go get your kid. That's California. And they want this guy to be our president. Well, there's a way to stop them. If you want to travel out there and uh, do what you need to do. I'll tell you what. They're they're really, I mean, this is, again, I'm I'm not making this up. This is this is in the news. It's another country. It's not the United States. I don't of recognize it's not this. Not a country. I don't. No, I well, don't well, want to have well, anything to do with. Why that. would this even be coming up for a vote among people? Why, why would any human being say, "God, you know that's right"? Those damn eleven-year-old boys. They know whether they want to be a boy or a girl. God, you shouldn't interfere with that. I mean, they're it's eleven. Insanity. My God. It's evil, and it's insanity, basically, is what's going on. By the way, Trump is going to the wake tomorrow in New York for the officer who was shot in the face by that uh, thug. That, yeah, that thug, what was it, arrested 19 times or something? As 21. I 21 times, yeah. Nine felonies. God I'm almighty. telling you, every law is for the criminals now. It's not for the law-abiding citizens. I was thinking about that last night when I when I got my tax bill. I got rooked again. In the last five years, if I'd sat on my ass and smoked dope and ate Doritos and played video games and yeah. not worked, yeah. I would have made more money. I actually lost money the last five years by working and trying to work yeah. with you and do the, the show yeah. and everything. Yeah. Should have, we should have sat on our ass we, for we five years. Done, we could have made got, more money. We could have got COVID money. We could have gotten you know, grant stuff and COVID yeah. money and so, fake money and uh, you know all the investment money. And all that stuff absolutely if you don't work and sit on your butt the government hands you a check if you cross the border they give you plane tickets phones debit cards whatever you want if you work they show up at tax day and they steal your money and they give it to the others to buy their votes it's unbelievable i i, I mean honestly this we i we I don't know why we can't just take a step back a minute and say, all right, now hold on a minute. Just, just look at all the things that are happening that are actually real things happening. We did the stuff we just talked about. It's, I, I, it's the wrong. Uh, and we had peace and prosperity for four years. Peace and prosperity, four years. And we were energy independent. Yep. I mean, but he energy- said he did mean tweets, so we yeah. got to get rid of him. Yeah. He's mean. He's embarrassing. Yeah. <sighs> And again, it's because of the First Amendment. If the press had said, wait a minute, Trump didn't say there were good Nazis. What Trump said was that there were good people on both sides of the debate of whether to take down statues. Oh, I, I yeah. don't, if he had never said that, I don't think it would have mattered. Well, I, uh, but I'm saying if the press had called them every time the liberals came out with these attacks, if the media had said, no, 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 now hold on a minute, uh, uh, then I think it would have been a chance that we, we, our country would have kept on the right freaking path. <laughs> but again, they attacked him so much, they thought Joe Biden... Biden was going to be a savior. Oh, he's going to yeah. bring us back. Good old grandpa is going to bring us back to normalcy again. God bless Joe. Fre- I mean, it's unbelievable. They did it. They did this to us. <laughs> the Babylon B says New York City mayor assures migrants if they run out of prepaid debit cards, they can just rob Americans directly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be your robber this evening. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I love that sheriff down in Florida. Remember the politically incorrect sheriff down in Florida, Santa Rosa County, Florida, Bob John. Johnson, uh, during a news conference two years ago, he, he, he said, well, you know, we're talking about these home invasions. If someone's breaking into your house in Florida, you're more than welcome to shoot them. We prefer you do shoot them, actually. It's better. I mean, it's a no-brainer. He said, and now he's, he's doubling down. He said, if you shoot somebody accurately, you kill the guy, you save taxpayers a lot of money. I also said that if somebody gets killed during a home invasion, the odds of them reoffending are zero. We like those odds. And in Santa Rosa County, Florida, we have a very high percentage of the population that have guns. And I promote the use of them in your house. If somebody kicks your door in because they're not coming in to give you a hug or give you cookies, they're coming in.
coming in to commit felonies, it's better to shoot them. And he says, guess what? We haven't had any home invasions. <laughs> you don't have to retreat. You don't have to give them a warning. You don't have to go to barricade yourself in a room. You can shoot and kill them. In the state of Florida, that's perfectly legal. In these other states, they don't have that. People are afraid to own guns. They're afraid to protect themselves. That's why you have the crime rate in New York and California. Arm yourselves and protect yourselves. And he has weekly training classes to citizens, gun safety, improving their aim, and not being afraid of when knowing how to you know, support and appreciate and be fearful of weapons in terms of respect. And he says, by the way, I get death threats every day by the hundreds. And a guy says, well, aren't you worried about that? And he says, no, all the death threats are coming from states where you can't buy a gun anyway, so I don't really care. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sheriff Bob Johnson, Santa Rosa, Florida, 446, Kimber Pete and Flounder. <laughs> The Kimmer Show is only live on Extra 106.3 every weekday afternoon on your drive home. We have a surprise guest on the phone. We have Stacy, who is one of the subsisters. Oh, my God. And I... she just heard you mentioning about a kissing booth. By... <laughs> Hugging. <laughs> Hi. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell all my mom's friends that you are going to be there having a kissing booth. Oh, I'm so... You... <laughs> very popular. Your, your mom. <laughs> well, I, well I, you had me going here until you said you were going to call all your mom's friends. I, I was, I was kind of hoping you could say you would call all your friends, Stacy. <laughs> uh, about that, sir. <laughs> oh, sir, here we go. <laughs> the Kimmer Show, every afternoon from 3 to 6 p.m. on Extra 1063 and the Extra app. Five stars all rise for To Kill a Mockingbird. Unmissable and unforgettable. A mockingbird for our moment. Beautiful, elegiac, satisfying, even exhilarating. A New York Times critic's pick. Mockingbird is now the most successful American play in Broadway history. All rise for Aaron Sorkin's great play. Richard Thomas is Atticus Finch in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. Playing at the Fox Theater May 7th through the 12th. For tickets, visit broadwayinatlanta.com. Is this the year you want to grow your business? Do you want to expand your team? Build a new office? Hey, it's Tug, and I want to tell you about First Liberty Building and Loan. Are you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you're dealing with a new person? You won't have to with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they can help you too. They know the patterns, they know the ebbs and flows, and they know business. Now the Frost family wants to know you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, or expanding. Reach out and spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. FirstLibertyGA.com. By the way, if you're a young banker and you want to work with a team that's faith-friendly with a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to First Liberty Building and Loan at FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peyronie's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one -on -one evaluation and resolve your ED, peronies, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at stopmyed.com. 
Hey there, it's Tara, owner and publisher of Our Town Monthly, where you'll find familiar faces, local voices, and community businesses like JRM Management. Thanks, Tara. I'm Missy Miller, event coordinator at JRM Management. We are your event specialist. We are excited to see you at the Georgia Food and Wine Festival, March 21st through the 24th. We'll have food, beverages, cooking demos, live music, shopping, and more. Or maybe you're looking for an event where you can bring the entire family. Join us at the Marietta Community Egg Hunt Friday, March 29th, and the Northeast Cobb Community Egg Drop Saturday, March 30th. There will be multiple egg hunts by age and lots of kid-friendly activities. Also, look out for the Kennesaw Big Shanty Festival, the Smyrna Spring Donkle Festival, and of course, the North Georgia State Fair. There's always something fun happening in our community, and we want you to know about it. That's why we love our partnership with Our Town Monthly. You are so right, Missy. If JRM is there, the fun follows. Friends, check out all the exciting community events hosted by JRM. RM Management. And remember, Our Town is your town at Our Town Monthly. There we go. Hey, burning, burning. Elvis Presley. Big hit here. This was Elvis's last major hit, Burning Love. It was 1972. His last major hit became number two on America's chart. It was written by Dennis Lind and originally recorded by a country artist named Arthur Alexander. It was soon covered. Elvis made it famous. Biggest hit single in America since Suspicious Minds in 1969. Burn in love, Elvis Presley. Our birthday list includes Elizabeth Mitchell... I don't know who this is, but if you watch, I watched the movie Lost, or the series Lost. She was Juliet, Elizabeth Mitchell, 54. She was Rachel Matheson on Revolution. I don't know what that is. And Mrs. Claus in Tim Allen's Santa Claus movies. Elizabeth yeah, Mitchell, you know her. 54. She's, she's been a lot long blonde hair. You know her. I'm sure. I, in fact, I should Google her because I, I do want to see what she looks like. And, uh, and, and uh, is that a euphemism? It Google is. Her? I want to Google, Google her. her. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> By the way, that's pretty much all I'm good for right now, ladies. Just for the record, you know what I mean. <laughs> I can You're Google the Googler. hell out of you, baby. I will go Google you until next Thursday. <laughs> You're the Barney Google and Googling. I'm the absolute Googler Amundo right here. And on uh, this day in history, it was in 1836, the first Mormon temple was dedicated in Kirkland, Ohio. And it says here, Mormon fun fact, Mormons are not allowed to drink coffee because they can't have strong beverages. And it says so many of them don't call coffee tables coffee tables. They call them Everyday tables. Well, the magazine right, right there on the everyday table. What? That's what it says. True fact. It says true fact. Right now. It's from Flounder's history thing. I would not want to, you know, counter Flounder's history thing. Uh, 453. Yeah, I think we have another uh, Flounder's funny for that. We haven't done one this hour, have we? Have we done one this hour? I don't think we've we have not. I'll be damned. Well, uh, anytime you want to uh, pop it in there. Uh, oh, you want to hear That's something? That's what she said. Yeah, we'll pop you. it in now. Hey, oh, I, I, here we go for 53. <laughs> I actually used to work in a prison where they made license plates. And one day, one of the inmates called me over. He's like, come here, man. You got to take a look at this. I'm like, what? He goes, I'm making a plate right now. Some guy wants a personalized plate that says groovy dude. And I'm like, yeah. So he goes... What a loser. <laughs> I said, dude, you're in jail. <laughs> you're making a license case. <laughs> I got fired from the prison. <laughs> One day I came in with get out of jail free cards for Monopoly and passed them out. <laughs> <laughs> that was underappreciated. <laughs> I used to work in an office. One day a woman came up to my desk and said, Hey, can I use the phone, please? And I'm like, Yeah, sure, go ahead. She goes, um, Do I have to dial nine? I said, um, You know, I, I don't know who you're calling. <laughs> you calling the cops? <laughs> Start with nine. <laughs> I used to uh, I used to work in a lighthouse. 
I got fired for making shadow puppets. <laughs> Ships kept crashing into the rocks, trying to avoid the big giant bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dragon. It's a dragon. <laughs> that was if, Bobby Tessel. I wonder what the. Have you ever done shadow puppets of, at, at, at an outing of any kind, at a party or a gathering or anything? Pete Davis, have you had done, you know, the shadow mm, puppets with a light thing? No. We, we, we had drugs and alcohol by the time I came around. Flounder, what, have you ever even seen anybody do shadow? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen it done, but we didn't do it when we were kids. Oh, really. we, did, we used to do it all the time. Anytime you had an opportunity, if you were, if there was a car with a headlights on in front of your garage or something uh we would just you know do something like to make a little something I mean, it used to be a thing <laughs> really good and you could there were guys who could actually make you know puppets and um, um, things moving and stuff it was really it was unbelievable it was a simpler time it was a simpler time the truly it really i mean was that it, in between goldfish <laughs> swallowing and cramming into phone booths i was learning how to smoke lucky strikes when i was 10 years old <laughs> i oh, guess boy. anyway uh you want to hear something sweet i was bragging about my granddaughter molly the other day i'll make this quick because i hate people like me who brag about their grandchildren but little molly again she's perfect she's she's beautiful and smart and witty and clever and unselfish and and giving and nurturing and she's just bright as hell and smart i mean gifted in every way uh jennifer posted this and she said the other day uh, jennifer my daughter jennifer said i'm hanging out with my fabulous niece miss molly the other day and she says nen nen she calls her calls her nen 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 i thought of you today i sprained two fingers and i had to tape them together and i was thinking god what an inconvenience this was and then i realized that it was only temporary for me but nen nen you have to deal with things like this every day because Jennifer had a stroke several years ago, and she has trouble doing. But again, this girl just turned ten yesterday, and she, you know, and this is what she thinks of. She, I mean, this is what she's like. It's unbelievable. And I'm so proud. I, I'm so happy for her. I mean, it's my daughter and her husband uh, Dan, and uh, the way they raise her family. And just, I mean, I'm just what a sweet, what an incredible little girl. And she's a f- fireball. She's totally freaking fearless. Absolutely. She'll go on a skateboard in one of these those concrete canyon things, flopping up, doing jumps, twisting stuff. I mean, skiing. I mean, any zooming. I mean, what, anything. Uh, jumping, jumping off, diving. I mean, it's unbelievable. The kid is totally fearless. And Anyway, whatever. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 457. Um, oh, P. Diddy has, has got some more uh, antics being disclosed, and they don't say exactly what it is, but there's some video surfacing with P. Diddy Combs and Justin Bieber when Justin Bieber was a young boy. The video showed 48 hours with Sean Diddy Combs and Justin Bieber when he was, I think, 15. Uh, 48 hours with Diddy, him, and his boy, the rapper said in the video, shared to Bieber's YouTube account 14 years ago. They're having the times of their lives, like we're hanging out, we're doing, well, I can't really disclose what we're doing, but it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Here, I got the audio right here. Oh, here so we go. Let's see, here we go. So he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him, and his boy. Um... They're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I I had legal guardianship of Usher when when you know he he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So um, Justin Bieber and, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Justin, he's in. Uh, yeah, uh, Justin Bieber said, "Hey, let's go get some girls." When he asked, when he was asked yeah. what he wanted to do, and the rapper responded, "Man, after my heart, that's what I'm talking about." Babylon B says, "Nation starting to wonder if Diddy may have done a few of those things he repeatedly rapped about." Doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and by the way, uh, one of his uh, former uh, fellow employees, when he was with Jennifer Lopez, has some very nasty things to say, and those are coming up in a minute. First, and holy crap, it's sports coming up too. It's five o'clock. I can't believe it. Give her Pete and Flounder. Here we go. Stand by.
WFOM and W292EV Marietta on Dickey Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches. Long and difficult path. Lisa Brady, Fox News, was described for Baltimore, where a vital port is closed until further notice after yesterday's collapse of the key bridge. A portion of it still resting on the cargo ship that hit a support column. We still don't fully know the condition of the portions of the bridge that are still standing or of infrastructure that is below the surface of the water. So rebuilding will not be quick or easy or cheap, but we will get it done. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says there's no timeline yet for moving the ship and reopening the port, but that he would expect that could happen much more quickly than bridge reconstruction. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says the port closure will have a wide-ranging economic impact. The Port of Baltimore is responsible for uh, cars, heavy vehicles, agricultural equipment, the largest amount in the entire country. So this is not just going to impact Maryland. This is impacting the farmer in Kentucky. It's impacting the auto dealer in Michigan. Fox Business's Hillary Vaughn. The other big economic question is, could this impact inflation with supply chain hiccups as goods are being rerouted to other ports? But Secretary Buttigieg says today he doesn't expect this to have a huge impact on inflation. He thinks that the supply chain issues here are more specialized and localized than what we saw during the pandemic. So they don't expect this to impact inflation broadly nationwide. As the NTSB investigates, the Coast Guard says the ship operator has activated its salvage and pollution plans. Divers continue the search for the bodies of six missing construction workers. The U.S. will keep pushing for a ceasefire and hostage deal between Israel and Hamas. We do think it's possible to bridge those differences and we're going to continue to try to bridge those differences. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller as the Israeli Prime Minister says he hopes Hamas got the message that international pressure won't work. Though Israel's also working to reschedule a canceled trip for talks in Washington on the Israeli military plans for the city of Rafah in Gaza. America is listening to Fox News. Oh, I cracked the hull of my new ski boat today. Oh, my gosh, why'd you do that? It's not like I was trying to do it, you know. Sorry, that's rough. My bad, bro. Did anyone witness this epic fail? Yes, this video's galore, and now I'm a meme. Accidents don't just happen in sea shanties, so Progressive Boat Insurance has you covered. Take as little as four minutes to see what you can save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Covered subject to policy terms and not available for all boats or in all situations. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. Ruff, ruff. Me. It's only the Kimmer. Don't be scared. 503 with the Kimmer Pete and Flounder on 1063. Hump Day, Wednesday. In case you just joined us in here earlier, the Braves opening game is going was going to be tomorrow, but it's going to be rainy. Is it Philadelphia, right? They're going to be uh, postponed until Friday as, uh, for opening day for the Braves. Uh, just for the record. And we got all kinds of newsy stuff coming up. Uh, Holy crap at sports with Pete. Flounder's funnies. Uh, Pete's tweets. And the latest on the bridge. And by the way, when they were, in case you're wondering, I, I realized this last night. was thinking about it. They haven't found those bodies yet as far as I know. The guys who were, I, I, I don't know how they didn't warn them in time to get off the bridge. Uh, I, I, still, I don't understand why there wasn't, if they just had time to stop the cars from going and put down barricades for the cars, why didn't they tell, hey, by the way, you guys got to get off the bridge. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand. But anyway, um, think about it this way. When, the, when those guys went into the water, so did the bridge. 
So under that water are, are the th- thousands of pounds and tons of steel, girders, shards of steel. I mean, I can't imagine how those divers can even try to get in the dark and the cold, dark waters around all the collapsed structure of all that steel and all the stuff in the water with those bodies. I mean, it's got to be, and, and there's still cargo containers. I mean, it's just, you know, including ones that have hazard in them and stuff. Anyway, it's just what a nightmare it's got to be. And, and I, it, I, I just find it interesting that Marjorie Taylor Greene calls for an investigation oh. saying, we don't know what the real cause is right now. Let's have an investigation. And she gets vilified. And Pete Buttplug up there says the exact same thing. We're going to have an investigation. And they all, oh, 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 oh yep. thank you. In, thank in you. fact, let's talk some more about that. Uh, a long, uh, it's called a Baltimore journalist and creator of The Wire uh, is uh, calling Marjorie Taylor Greene submoronic for suggesting that the bridge collapse uh, should be investigated in case it was intentional or something happened. And again, uh, one, one of the th- uh, 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 p- p- very reasonable thoughts is if somebody sabotaged their navigation system or the power system or something, uh, as, you know, uh, for whatever reason, I mean, there's a lot of things that could be. And you have to investigate. You can't just say, oh, I'm, obviously it was an accident. Forget the whole thing. Don't be ridiculous. These days? You can't. These days? You, nothing is to take for granted these days. God, anyway, so Marjorie Taylor Greene says we ought to check this out. Well, this guy, David Simon, report, uh, responded to Marjorie Taylor Greene's comments and said it was a port operation, bridge maintenance that led to the bridge falling after the ship container, da da da. Uh, she said she wanted, there ought to be a serious investigation into the horrifying tragedy. Is this an intentional attack or an accident? Uh, questions whether it was, we need to find out what happened there. Complete. And he says, well, are you intentional or just an accident, Marjorie? You complete Submoronic pratfall of a human being? Moron, port authorities and operations, interstate bridge maintenance have nothing whatsoever to do with Baltimore's governance, but are all state functions. Immediately politicizing this is for empty fact-free hacks. This guy said, and then, but uh, Pete Buddy uh-huh. Fudge says, "Well, we're going to have to investigate what." I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, again, it's politics, and it's it's it's, it's by definition of labeling you into yeah. a corner and then attacking you, even though the, the, it doesn't matter what they're doing at the same time. Oh my God! Yeah. It, these are the same ilk that told us that the COVID thing came from a bat soup yeah. four miles away from the actual. Uh, yeah lab where it came out of. Yeah. Unbelievable. In fact, uh, Flounder, let's play that Pete uh, Fuddy funny Fudge uh, uh, <laughs> thing again. Remember, uh, the Transportation Secretary, the former little town mayor, Pete Buddy Fudge, uh, was the guy who said uh, that with all the roads in all these uh, ter- uh, uh, counties and uh, cities all over America have to be redone because they were made uh, to cut off from the black communities because the roads are so racist the way they were designed that it wasn't fair to the black and poor communities. Well, guess what? It's the same thing about bridges, apparently. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into oh. those design choices. Um, I don't think we have anything to lose by confronting that simple reality, and I think we have everything to gain by acknowledging it and then dealing with it, which is why the reconnecting communities, that billion dollars, is something we want to get to work right away. Yeah, to change all those racist roads and bridges, apparently. I mean, honestly, these people actually th- th- believe this. St- I mean, th- th- this is how they operate. This is what they think is important. Changing racist this, roads they and took bridges. The assi- yeah, this guy couldn't be assistant manager at Winn-Dixie in America, and yet here he is running his mouth. And, and of course, uh, President Murderer Crime Family come and says, oh, I used to take the train over that bridge all the time, commuting, <laughs> drove over it and took the train and so forth. And uh, some of the reaction to that for even today, uh, he just has to lie. He has to value inserting himself into every situation. Uh, gee, what train tracks is he talking about? There are none on that bridge. Oops, here goes Joe again. Biden's off the tracks himself. Another example of his mental derailment. And the White House said, oh, he was only talking about driving over the bridge. You know that. He was only talking about driving. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, commuting and driving, that's all he was saying. Yeah, he also said he was at ground zero of the September 11th terrorist attacks when, in fact, he wrote a book saying he obviously was in Washington. And then he also said he watched the Pittsburgh bridge collapse when that went down. And, in fact, uh, it was uh, sometime after when he actually went there. I mean, just you can't help it. He, he puts him. He has to be part of everything to show that. Therefore, he's part of everything. 
I guess. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Good lord. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, what? <laughs> Just on he's like Prince America's Earth. get. He's America's eyewitness, is what I, he is. I know. I know. You want to hear a, a cute story? A little. I got a little cute story yeah. in here. Hold on a minute. Where the hell? Oh, here it is. It's a cute story. It's an elderly woman, and I shouldn't say that because I'm elderly myself now. I think she's like 79 or something, and she's a tender-hearted animal lover in England. And she found an abandoned hedgehog on the side of the road. A hedgehog <laughs> is a little tiny, little furry, uh, hairy creature, and they tend to roll up in little balls and stuff. And they're kind of innocent little fur ball creatures. Okay. Uh, she found this uh, little. Hedgehog hedgehog on the side of the road and actually uh, uh, experts will tell you that hedgehogs if they're out in the daytime they're in trouble uh, they're not supposed to be out in the day, so they're having a, they're having a problem if they're they're in danger if they're out during the daytime. So this woman, uh, this old woman, found this uh, hedgehog, a sick baby hedgehog, on the side of the road. Uh, let's see, um, let's see. Hold on, she she said uh, she uh, she uh, she th- the baby animal. She put it in a cardboard box, lined it with newspaper, and put in some cat food. She tried to keep her distance f- uh, during regular checks overnight through the night when she allowed the hedgehog to try to recover, never allowing herself to get too close to it uh, so she didn't know if it had any ears, eyes, legs, or anything else in the, on the hedgehog. And so she took it the next morning. She took it to the, uh, let's see, took it to the Reserve and Wildlife Hospital in Cheshire. It was the first admission of the day. The woman there said uh, the lady came in with a box. She found this head, baby hedgehog on the pavement. It was cold. She picked it up and very tenderly put it in the box to keep it and make sure it was okay. So the woman at the, at the animal center took the box and took it from her, took it to triage in the separate room to open it up and realize that, um, hmm, no, it was not a hedgehog at all. It was uh, one of those bobbled things that comes off a hat. It was a little round, furry thing that comes off a hat. And the lady, it looked like a head. If you see the picture, you can Google it and you can see the picture. It looks like an ant. It looks like a hedgehog. It had like a little furry little hedgehog. And she never, and she picked it up gently and put it into the box, not wanting to fit. So she didn't know it wasn't even anyway. And and by the way, the lady said, uh, I would have immediately known from the weight it wasn't a hedgehog, but she said, uh, she won't make the same mistake. But she said she was a good natured woman. She did the right thing. Animal lovers should follow in her footsteps and rescue a real hedgehog. If it's wandering around during the daytime, it's a sign the animal is in trouble. <laughs> so take it, take it somewhere. Anyway, I thought that was pretty sweet and pretty cute. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, and don't forget Friday, uh, the, we're doing our show 3 to 6 at Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road. And uh, we're gonna. I think Pete's going to have a spanking section. We'll have a kissing booth, uh, probably. I think Stacy and her other uh, sub sister are going to be uh, taking care of all that stuff for us, and naughty little friends. I don't think they're going to lo- allow the spanking thing. I well, think we'll have I, to. I think if some some little hottie comes in there and says, "I want Pete line. Davis to spank me," by God, you're going to spank her. Now, can we go live on that? We don't. I guess we can't really go live on YouTube on that up there, can we? Is there any way to do that? Probably not. Well, that's all right. Anyway, yep. uh, uh, by the way, coming up, we're, uh, we're Pete Davis, we're going to be talking about the uh, per- a potential number one pick of the NFL. And holy cow, I don't know, there's a lot of social media stuff going around that may make this a very interesting experience. Coming up, also Flounder's Funnies and Pete's Tweets 513. Give her Pete and Flounder. It's hump day, and you're on board right now. The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's a camera. How's it going? Here's what you miss from the talk master. Why do politicians, both parties, love Social Security? The Democrats, because they can always tell voters Republicans are going to take their Social Security away. And Republicans, so that they can say, no, we're not. We're going to save Social Security. There you go. Too bad the federal government won't let you invest the way you want to for your own retirement. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3. Or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. 
Central Heating and Air Conditioning wants you to know the start of the new season is the perfect time to ensure your home's comfort. Don't wait like most people do to have your HVAC system serviced. Your home should have maintenance twice a year. Maintenance helps keep your system running at peak efficiency and extends the life of your equipment. So turn to Atlanta's carrier experts for your system's maintenance. With Central, you get carrier products, carrier warranty, and carrier peace of mind. It's allergy season and Central Heating and Air can fix what ails your house and possibly your family with home ventilation and air quality products. Central has packages designed around health using variable speed, fresh air ventilation, air cleaners, air purifiers, dehumidifiers, and more. Central Heating and Air is one of the few second generation locally owned and operated HVAC companies in Atlanta. With Central, you're not just a number, you're a member of the family. It's been that way since 1947 and they've serviced over 100,000 customers right here in Atlanta. Call 770-GET-HEAT or go to centralheat.com. We're smart, we care. We're Central Heating and Air. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex-trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state-of-the-art Rolex service center in their store. Liebrand uses only genuine Rolex parts and their estimates are free. Drop by Liebrand in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs or visit Liebrand.com. True Prep on Cobb Parkway is your one-stop shop for emergency preparedness supplies, including freeze-dried food, water filtration, first aid, and more. They also have a large selection of firearms, including a huge selection of AR-15s, firearm accessories, and ammo at the lowest prices around. They are locally owned and operated. You can visit their store in Marietta on Cobb Parkway or online at trueprep.com. That's T-R-U prep.com. Prepare today for a worry-free tomorrow at True Prep. I enjoy a good night's sleep, and I like to breathe while I'm sleeping. My wife appreciates that, too. That's why I wear a CPAP. You want the right machine. You want expert advice. You want all the supplies that go with it. You get it all at CPAPs, etc. in Alpharetta. Machines, masks, tubing, filters, cleaning supplies, all of it, and they ship nationwide. Walk-ins, by the way, are welcome. CPAPs, etc. Alpharetta, CPAPSETC.com. You shouldn't need a degree in finance to choose a checking account. That's why we made Truist One Checking. No trade-offs, no compromise, no hassle. Just the stuff you want from a bank that cares. And that means no overdraft fees, lots of practical perks, and automatic upgrades. Truist One Checking. One simple choice. Visit Truist.com slash one. Truist.com slash O-N-E. Truist Bank, member FDIC. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO Daniel Madelon and host Tug Coward for the weekly radio show Back Your Blue. They will highlight special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Tune in Saturdays at 10 a.m. to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. This week's guest is Mike Lutzenkirchen from the Lutze 43 Foundation. Tune in on Saturdays or catch up on all past episodes wherever you get your podcasts or at the podcastpark.com. No one plans on going to jail, but when it happens, it's important that you know who to call. Call a second chance bail bonds where we believe everyone deserves a second chance. Whether your loved one's been arrested in Cherokee, Clayton, or any of the other Metro Atlanta counties in between, a second chance bail bonds works fast to help expedite release within hours. A second chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call a second chance 24 seven at 770-627-3235 or or online at atlbail.com. All right, look out. Our 5 o'clock hour is sponsored by Lee Brand Jewelers, where luxury jewelry and watches are affordable. Drop by their store in Sandy Springs or visit leebrand.com. 518. And now, holy crap, it's sports with Pete Davis. The Braves-Phillies season opener, scheduled for tomorrow, Thursday, has been postponed to the excessive ugliness of most Philadelphia fans. <laughs> also, it's going to rain. Well, that too. So opening day will be Friday at 3.05 p.m., and you can hear all the Braves games on our sister station, 680 The Fan, all season long. Excellent. Spencer Strider will start for Atlanta, Zach Wheeler for the Phils. The Brewers-Mets game also will move to Friday, so Northeast not having good weather. Don't know if this is a good or bad sign, but all six CBS Sports baseball experts 
have picked the Braves to win the NL East again. Okie doke. Well, that's so, reasonable. I mean, that sounds fun. It is reasonable. Yeah. Uh, the Phillies finishing second again. So yeah, that's that could what be, they have. Could be a good battle all year. The Dodgers' spending spree continues, extending 29-year-old catcher Will Smith to a 10-year, $140 million contract. He'll be 39 Holy. when it's over. It's the first time a catcher has ever gotten a decade-long deal. I was going to say, a catcher's knee is lasting until he's 39? Dumb. That's Come unless on. they make him a DH, I guess, or so. He's good. He's good player. So I want. Wow. You know, he's their cleanup guy right now. I think. Wow. Cool. So yeah. He's a good player. Uh, more Mets dysfunction. Former Mets pitcher Chasen Bradford this week. The best of times and the worst of times. Bradford was seen swerving all over the road and hitting medians before he was arrested on a DUI charge, according to the Henderson, Nevada Police Department. Mm. The 34-year-old's arrest came just one day after he was welcomed as a probationary officer into <laughs> the Henderson yeah. Police, Department Police Department after yeah. leaving Police Academy. Yeah, Obviously, he was watching too many of the films. <laughs> Jason Bradford is no longer working for the Henderson <laughs> Police Department. So, oh bad gosh. timing on, One on day his, uh, after you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The White Sox are selling a $15, 16-ounce campfire milkshake this season. I guess that will make up for all the drive-by shootings inside the stadium. The gargantuan chocolate milkshake is topped with whipped cream, torched marshmallows, graham crackers, chocolate, and chocolate syrup that drips down the rim of the glass, all sucked down by a straw the size of a baby's arm. Oh, and, and it looks delicious. <laughs> and it's which is fifteen dollars for the milkshake. Fifteen dollars, which prompted Jargo to tweet: having a heart attack while demolishing a sixteen-ounce milkshake would only be the second worst decision you made after becoming a White Sox fan. <laughs> Can you imagine the brain freeze of a thing like that? <laughs> oh my God. I would so eat it though. It looks delicious. Uh, Georgia running back Trevor Etienne could miss at least one game this upcoming season if found guilty of the DUI. He was arrested for last Sunday morning in Athens. That could mean the first game, August 31st, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium against Clemson. Hmm. Now, I don't want to say Trevor was drunk, no. but when the arresting officer asked him for his ID, the player handed over his car keys. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, officer. There they are. By the way, he was driving an Audi RS7. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, okay, a little yeah, it's pretty fast car. car. Yeah, a little sporty. Uh, so what's former Alabama head coach Nick Saban doing these days in retirement, you ask? I wonder what he's doing these days. I'm glad you asked. Uh, according to Terry, his wife of over 50 years, mm. the legendary coach is doing some everyday activities for the very first time. She says he's actually texting and reading his own emails, and he sent his first ever email. He even took his first trip to the pharmacy to pick up his first prescription. <laughs> he's actually quite proud of himself. <laughs> I'll bet. Think about it. <laughs> she sounds like she's describing you figuring out how uh, to use a Netflix box or yes, something like yes, that. Yes, it does sound exactly like that. <laughs> like he gets a dog treat when he gets home. Oh, Nicky, good boy. <laughs> anyway, NFL news. The Panthers signed free agent pass rusher Jadavian Clowney to a two-year, $20 million contract so he can chase Kirk Cousins around the field when they play the Falcons. Uh, oh That's boy. not something Kirk wanted to see. No. NCAA Pres Charlie Baker calling for a ban on college prop bets in states with legal sports wagering. North Carolina now has it. Uh, short for prop bets or proposition bets, props are wagers not related to the final score, like a side bet on the over-under how many three-pointers a player will make during the game. Uh, the request comes on the heels of ESPN reporting that the NBA is looking to betting irregularities involving Toronto forward Jonte Porter had issued two games in which prop bets on Porter were the two biggest winners in the NBA. On both occasions, Porter left the game early, which ensured the under hit on the bets. ESPN has not reported a link between him and the wagers, but the activity was flagged by Lee Data Scientists. Mm. In a related story, there's such a thing now as league data scientists. Oh, we used my. to call them statisticians. So was, was the bet on how many minutes he would play or how many points he would score or something and that, then he would leave early so that they, they wouldn't is that is that the gimmick or what they're charging? Something like that. Yeah, it's a, how many you know, how many points or something he'd do and if he left the game early which ensured it would be under 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that could call in. Co I'm telling you right now, I've said this for years. Once this hits, you yeah. can't stop it. It's yeah. the present. It's the future. Gambling is here. Yeah. But we're going to have problems that are just going to be right. enormous right. Yeah. with this. Right. Players, coaches, refs. It's going to be a bad. The Trailblazers visit the Hawks tonight, so you got another chance to go down there and see your Atlanta Hawks. Oh, State I'll, I'll get right, right, now. right now. All right. Sorry. As a public service, The yeah. Onion has put together a list of signs you may be addicted to sports gambling, Kimmer. All right, sir. <laughs> what are the signs? Why were you making a face there? You're making a face. No, you're... you're, okay, you're here's you're, the signs. Yeah, sir, please. All right. Uh, you, you slick back your hair and chew on a toothpick, even though all your gambling takes place online at home. <laughs> slick back my hair. Yeah, that's me. Toothpick I have a lot. Oh, I think we lost Pete. Yeah, we lost him. I, that was what I was looking at because the uh, picture was breaking up and he's. Oh, we may be back. Try it again. Yeah, we're back. Oh, we're, we're back. back. Oh, we're back. Okay. Uh, this is. No, we're, we're back. Gone. We're back. Uh, when you open your wallet, a moth flop. All right, try it again. <laughs> All right. When you open your wallet, a moth flies out and gives you odds on the Lakers. Oh, okay, we, uh, you're on your fifth. <laughs> no, we missed we, the problem. Is is, no, it's not. We missed part of things. So I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, hold on a minute. Flower's going to reset something or do something. In the meantime, while you do that, uh, we're not done yet. Hold everything. Don't go. Uh, Flower's going to reset a thing for our link. Uh, and, and while he does that, I will tell you that on this day in 1917, a little sports mem a memorabilia yield for you. 1917 on this day, the team was the Seattle Metropolitans of the Pacific Coast League of Canada, and they beat the Montreal Canadiens on this day in 1917, becoming the first American hockey team to win the state. Stanley Cup in 1917. All right, he's back. And he's back, Pete Davis from the Mouth of Jamaican. Yes, sir. On this day, March 27, 1998, the Bulls Hawks matchup at the Georgia Dome, the biggest crowd in any NBA history game, 62,000 plus, and the Bulls won at 8974. I was at that game with our former great boss, the late Pat McDonald. Oh, wow, we had cool. Court side seats were right there, okay? I had no idea that Pat knew my. Michael Jordan from his days in Chicago. In fact, they were friends, and Jordan spent the entire game running up and down, trash talking Pat every time he went by. The things they said to each other, I wish I had written down because they oh, were hysterical. Man. And Pat McDonald, one of the greatest bosses of all time, he took care of me when the company that he worked for, the corporation, tried to screw me over. And I, 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 I won't talk and tell the story, but I, I'm telling you, Pat, I, I have so much respect for the late great pat mcdonald uh and well i'll tell you one little story there we had a uh a guy used to call tiktok when i was doing my commercials and when i do commercials i tend to uh, do a little overboard to help our sponsors you know tell little stories about them and so forth and this guy the program director would walk by the window while i'm doing my commercials pointing at his watch because he didn't want me to go more than 60 seconds because he thought they were like stealing airtime i said wait a minute you know this i'm getting our sponsors i'm telling talking about our sponsors Says, well, it's my show. I'm doing talking about my stuff. So anyway, so he kept doing this, and then I found out that he was he was back, uh, backstabbing me to other broadcasters in our company. So I went into Pat. Uh, I, I said one day, I said, Pat. I know my contract's up in like eight months or six months, whatever. I just want to tell you that I will not be renewing. Uh, I, again, I just want to say I've loved working here. It's been great, but I can't keep going with this program director guy. I just uh, it's not what I'm. I'm not going to be doing it, and I'm not. I'm not making any demands or anything. I'm not saying anything other than I'm not going to resign because I just can't take this guy. He was gone in like eight days. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, you know, he did the right thing. Pat knew how to operate a, a family and keep everything going properly. And he was he always did the right thing. And when, and when the corporation, uh, well, it, it's too long it's a story to tell now. And it's been Pete Sports. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's mad at me today. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm out of my mind. And it's all because of, 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 of what's going to, on Friday. I'm telling you, it's, it's the dumbest thing in my life and my whole world. But uh, when the company tried to have me suspended uh, for a time when I was saying stuff on the radio, which, which is not covered 
word in the human resources stuff. And Pat, and, and he said, no, no, no. Anyway, he was wonderful. And, and when he passed away, we were all very, very upset. One of the great guys of all time, Pat McDonald. And I'm sorry I took up all your time, but uh, uh, he deserves the accolades because he was a terrific guy. And his little daughter works for, uh, isn't she with, is she with Fox now? Yeah, she's Fox. Uh, yeah. yeah, a wonderful little lady, too. And God, she's probably 30 now. I've never no, heard as a little she's girl. Not, she's not 30 years old. She's got to be. Well, she's got to be out of college, I think. She's oh, got to yeah, be 23 or 4 or 5. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, right. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pete. Please continue. That's right. That's for Okay. Well, well, I do have one thing. Uh, uh, on this day, 2007, NFL owners make it official. Instant replay will be a permanent officiating tool, 2007. And one sports birthday, Buster Posey is 36. Now, Buster Posey, wasn't he a big star for the first couple of years? And then, was he the one who got creamed and they made the rule you can't slide into a catcher yeah. now? They pussified Major League Baseball yeah. because Buster Posey got yeah. hurt. And now, was he with San Francisco, I think, wasn't he? Yeah. At that, at that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Buster Posey, 36. Anyway, uh, Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder, 530. And uh, Flounder's Funny's coming up. More to come. Pete's tweets, too. Stream Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, Glenn Beck, Fox News, and even NASCAR on Sundays anywhere on the Extra 106.3 app. Download the app now and get 24-7 access to the live stream, the latest news, and everything you need to know about Atlanta's only conservative talk station. Download the Extra 106.3 app for Apple or Android and check out even more great original content at thepodcastpark.com. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors, but you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage, Entry Doors, and Windows. Is the tax deadline causing you anxiety? Searching for elusive 1099s and trying to uncover any exemptions? If so, you're not alone. Every year, Georgians find themselves looking backwards to file with the IRS, reporting tax history. But what if you were to flip the script? Not just report your taxes, but actually planning for them. We're Master Plan Retirement Consultants. We're local with offices in Marietta. We work with folks just like you to create a personalized, tax-efficient strategy designed to last a lifetime, a crucial piece to the holistic retirement plan. Do you have a retirement roadmap? You should. It's never too late. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Don't wait any longer. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, Inc., a registered investment advisory in the state of Georgia. Insurance, tax, and commodity services offered through Frickson Associates, Inc., DBA Master Plan Retirement Consultants. The aforementioned are affiliated companies. Hey, it's Front Office Lowe's for Underdog Fantasy. The NBA season is still here, and there's no easier way to get in on all the action than with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em game. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real money. It's easy. Pick two to five players from at least two different teams. Select higher or lower on the player stats, and if your pick hits, you can win up to 100 times your money. It's legal in Georgia, and it's a ton of fun to play as you can watch the Atlanta Hawks. Stop playing against the pros night in and night out with their hundreds of different lineups. It's just you against the stat. It's that easy. Underdog Fantasy is even easier to get started. Go to their easy-to-use mobile app or to underdogfantasy.com. Sign up and use the promo code LOS, and Underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. Plus, they'll give you a mystery special pick to use on your first pick of entry. That's Underdog Fantasy. Promo code LOS, L-O-S, to get your first deposit of 10 or more matched plus your special pick. Must be 18 and present in state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. African Americans are the most likely to die from colorectal cancer. The most important thing you can do is get screened starting at age 45. Insurance companies are required to cover not only colonoscopy, but also virtual colonoscopy and other less invasive exams. Talk to your doctor about your options. For more information on virtual colonoscopy, visit radiologyinfo.org slash virtualct. Furnished by the American College of Radiology and the Radiology Health Equity Coalition. 
Rebrand Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Rebrand Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state of the art Rolex service center in their store. Liebrand uses only genuine Rolex parts and their estimates are free. Drop by Liebrand in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs or visit Liebrand.com. One choke over the line on this day, 1971. Brewer and Shipley had this song, and the New York radio station WNBC banned One Choke Over the Line by Brewer and Shipley because of the drug references other stations followed. And when I was here in Atlanta, in 19, this was 1971. I came here in 1972, worked for a certain radio station that played music and was big heavy on news. And that radio station, I remember John Moore and all the uh, broadcaster guys, and they would, uh, they would introduce this song by saying, and now uh, Brewer and Shipley with one over the line. They could play the song, but they couldn't say the word toke. But they could play the radio. They could play the song because it was such a big hit. But they would not. We're not allowed to say the word "toke." Elmo Ellis was the general manager back then. He was the one who actually did a. I used to. I did the seven o'clock news every morning. Then I covered Jimmy Carter at the Capitol. And at the end of my newscast, I'd say, uh, I'd say, "Well, enjoy your grits, Kim Peterson," or like that. And and people were wondering, "Well, is he making fun of us or what?" And so Elmo Ellis actually did a a, a point counterpoint pro and con. He called it on whether I was uh, on what I was meaning when I was saying "enjoy your grits." Every Every morning, so anyway, kind of weird. Uh, God, that was 52 years ago. <clears throat> On this day in history, we have another sports thing here, Pete. I forgot it. Uh, I have it now. Here we go. In 1939, the University of Oregon won the first NCAA championship. They beat Ohio State 46-33. And uh, first uh, NCAA championship in uh, 1939. Oh, the thing there. And, uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, that's what I got a little kind of a longer... Um, Kind of a history thing for you that I kind of looked up because I thought it was Pardon me. fairly bizarre. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, what? Uh, well, hello. Uh, now I can't. Oh, here we go. Uh, 1968, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gargarin, who flew the first manned mission into space, was killed in a training mission. But here's the rest of the story. Uh, they said one thing, and really it was something else entirely. He was the first guy in space. He stood five feet feet two inches tall. In life and death, he left a brimming uh, legacy with outstanding achievements and a lot of questions. His final words before takeoff on the flight into space were, Poya Kalali, which means let's go, a common phrase in Russian speech these days. Uh, they didn't know what was going to happen in orbit for a few seconds of weightlessness. During the flight, he ate and drank and monitored his onboard systems. But he had Gar Gargarin in space, had no control whatsoever over the spacecraft. He was basically just sitting in it. He was a passenger and had nothing to do but sit there. After he returned to Earth, uh, he was a hero, and he didn't, uh, he did not, by the way, he did not land with the capsule. I didn't know this either. When the thing was coming down, he jumped out of the capsule and parachuted to the ground. He didn't land in the capsule. He, can you imagine jumping out at the right times before? Oh my God! <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what is he, Wiley Coyote, jumping off the boulder I, before it hits the ground? I, yes, yes. He parachuted out of the thing before it hit the ground. Uh, they were trumpeting his trailblazing space flight, return to Earth, guaranteed celebrity. In 19, that was in 68. Uh, he took off, a, in 68 rather, he took off on a routine training flight on his MiG-15. The plane crashed. Gargarin and his flight instructor both were killed. Gargarin was 32 years old. The Russians uh, glossed over the tales of whatever happened, but it turns out that the explanation was that there was a Soviet Su-15, a model much bigger than the MiG-15, which violated Yuri Gargarin's airspace on his training flight. The turbulence of the bigger plane caused Gargarin to lose control mm. and plunge to his death. Two wow. things. One, some people believe that they killed him on purpose because yeah. he was speaking out against the regime, and yeah. then yeah. and there's actually a photo of his charred body. Yeah. 
I think they killed him. I think I think that was true. I think that again, this was in, this was a time when you know things were not like they are now in 1968. Uh, it was a whole different world. Uh, I, uh, that's a stupid comment. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's the same as it was today. The exact same thing. All right. Uh, five, three, I'm an idiot. Uh, let's give away tickets. Founder, can we do that? Let's give away tickets. Here's our number, 404-741-1230. 741-1230. Kim Repeat and Flounder, we have two tickets to give away for opening night. It's a Friday night, opening night, May 7. Broadway in Atlanta presents To Kill a Mockingbird at the fabulous Fox Theater. So, you got that going for you. Friday night, May 7th, two tickets, 404-741-1230. And don't call in and try to get him if you can't go. You know, people sometimes go, <laughs> really, people go, oh, boy, I hope I win those. And they, oh, well, I'll be out of town. Anyway, it's uh, 404-741-1230. <laughs> the anyway. fact you have to actually say that, please I don't know. win yeah. the tickets. Yeah. I mean, seriously. <laughs> 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 I, I, I love that, though. We get it. You know, to go, well, I can't go. Give it to somebody else. Yeah, right. Well, that's what we were trying to do <laughs> before you called. That's what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you understood that. I don't know. Oh, Lordy. Anyway. Oh, by the way, I did mention this the other night. I watched the bat. I didn't watch all of the bats. It was on the other night. I, but they, they teased it as though something really weird was going to happen at the end. So I did kind of tape record the last part of it. And I did see it. Uh, and by the way, so you can stop calling. We have a winner. We have got 85 phone lines ringing here, so we have, we have a winner, but thank you so much. Um, on The Bachelor Show, uh, the girl Daisy, the one who was deaf and had uh, wore hearing aids and so forth, the little blonde Daisy. who put her feet up in his lap and so forth, um, she, it turned out that he was down to the last two and so they had the girls come out one at a time to the little place in the outside the beach, a little, you know, little uh, gazebo thing or whatever. Anyway, so Daisy comes out and he starts talking to her about what a wonderful thing this has been and all the things. Da, 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 da. And she says, well, let me just get this over with. I know you're not picking me. And he started crying and she started, I mean, and she said, I know you're not picking me. And. I'll tell you what, when she, the, what the, word, the things she said, the way she did it, how she handled it. And then at the end of the show of The Bachelor, they brought her on again. And I remember thing, she talked about how much of a better person she was. And I thought I, I, I was, I've not been more impressed with a TV show contestant of any time about the class that this hot blonde showed on that silly show. And I was just, I just wanted, if you saw the show, I just, I was so impressed with this girl and how she handled everything. And she, she said, I know you're not picking me. And it was, boy, what a moment. Well, not with that attitude, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> and he Loser. picked the wrong one, anyway, the other girl. <laughs> and by the way, the other good news was, when, uh, during the show, when it was going on during the series of The Bachelor, the girl I thought was kind of, was was one of my favorites. I love that Daisy. I, I, was, I would have picked her. And the other one, my second choice, was a girl named Jen, J-E-N-N, -N, Jen, who was kind of an exotic, sort of a, uh, kind of a, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know whether she was uh, Filipino or Spanish kind of the Spanish Filipino look Filipino. about her beautiful kind of petite and just gorgeous real emotional cried easily and was you know just excited about things and she's the new bachelorette she's the next bachelorette uh, it's going to oh, be on this yeah. series. In fact, in fact, there's a former Ole Miss player and a former Florida Atlantic football player. They're both going to be vying for her really? attention. Really? Really? Yeah. Well, she, I, I'm going to watch that because I liked her. She was yeah, beautiful and sweet. I, she, 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 she seemed to me uh, of a real... Just a girl next door, sweet, happy, nice girl. I mean, and she's beautiful, just sweet and charming. Anyway, so the type you meet on network television shows. Yeah, yeah. to try to get yeah. married with. 30. And by the way, that show there were something like thirty six original girls. How are you supposed to whittle from thirty six or and maybe it was maybe it was thirty two or thirty two or thirty six girls for the original? I yeah. can't believe it. Uh, I know how I'd start. I, <laughs> I'm going to kiss every one of you. And we're going to start with you and we'll go right down the line. And I got a window of about twenty of you right now. <laughs> are you chewing gum? <laughs> Is that a blank pin on your uniform? Uh, Founder, do we have a winner, sir, on our fabulous tickets for the uh, Kill Mockingbird? Yes, we do. Jill Dyer from Atlanta. 
The Atlanta Jills. Okay, excellent. Well, Jill, oh, congratulations. Good I hope you have people. A win- good uh, wonderful. People. Wonderful. I have a wonderful time. Uh, three forty. Uh, Five forty-three. Gotta see three. Five forty-three. Uh, can repeat in flounder. Those uh, things are left over. I got so many things I wanted to get to. Um, well, you wanted to talk about Caleb Williams. Oh God, yes, right. Okay, now again, Caleb Williams is the quarterback at USC. They are. Everybody is pretty much saying, and I think Pete, you agree, he probably will be the number one pick in the NFL draft coming up in a few, in a couple Maybe. of a few weeks. Yeah. Anyway, he, well, he's he's expected to be. He's touted as the number one pick. It's, that's been pretty common. Well, all of a sudden, uh, he's getting on social media reactions that are a little bit on the negative side, especially if he is picked by the team with the number one pick, which is the Chicago Bears. Uh, the Bears. Well, the, this guy, Caleb Williams, a quarterback, went to the women's basketball game the other day, and he was seen on social media with a pink phone wearing pink lipstick and carrying some kind of a pink purse or what do they call it? It's not a purse. It's a a clutch. A pink little clutch <laughs> pocket purse thing. Um, as people are saying, I know, wow, I, I, uh, no, wait a minute. I don't know about this in Chicago Bears. Hey, is this the Dennis leader? Dennis Rodman. Of, uh, Dennis Rodman owned that city. Well, they said one guy made a guy. He said, this is not a perfect comparison, but people don't give a blank uh, and forget about it if they start winning. And in Chicago Bulls case, they won and won a lot. And as long as Dennis Rodman was a menace on the boards, he could go and do whatever the hell he wanted to on and off the court as long as it wasn't particularly illegal. Hell, he even went to North Korea. Uh, I mean, he did all kinds of stuff here, but he was grabbing the rebounds. I think it's time we rebrand Chicago. It's not the Chicago we grew up in. It's full of woke, corrupt criminals, what it is now. They keep electing leftist Marxist mayors. The crime is rampant. It's horrible. I mean, I don't think it's the Chicago, the no, city of broad shoulders anymore. I guarantee you it's not. I was here in 1980 for two years, and I'm telling you what, that was a tough town. That yep, was daily. a very tough town. And- who was the broad? Well, remember that ran the convention. Remember the convention when they roughed up Cron- uh, Dan Rather and Cronkite and all. I mean, uh, Cronkite was saying there's a bunch of bull. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough town. Not anymore. These freaking liberal. Well, and, and the mayor. I mean, the governor of Illinois, Pers- Pers- Perskin, whatever is freaking that fat load. I mean, it's all just nothing but woke. Everything's woke all there now. Now, yeah, it's a woke town. Oh, my God. All right, five forty six. My goodness, we're almost out of time. I can't believe it. Uh, can repeat and flounder and more to come. A Pete Sweets coming up next. We'll do that shortly. And a flounder's funny and uh, uh, update the news for you and see what's going on here too with the. Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. 404-741-1230 if you want to join us. Oh, look out, it's a Kimmer. We've got your afternoons covered, all right, and the morning extras got your drive-in from 6 to 10 a.m. too. If you believe in America, and I believe in America, and Rhino and Los and Board Up Goey Virgin River believes in America, we can salvage this, but you better be ready to roll up your sleeves, because it ain't going to be an easy task, just like World War II storming the beaches of Normandy weren't an easy task. The Morning Extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra app. Buying a new car is about way more than just a car. You want to love it and everything that comes with it. And at Subaru of Gwinnett, we get that. You want to love the website. Easy to browse, easy to shop, and an unrivaled selection so you can find the model that suits you. Like the 2024 Subaru Outback, Crosstrek, or Ascent. All offering impressive gas mileage, standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, and the tools to explore the things you love. You want to love the people. And know that every time you stop by the dealership on Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, they'll be there for you, ready to help in any way possible. And you want to love the service. We'll check that box for you also, because during the spring sales event, there's a lot to love. So stop in during the Subaru A Lot to Love event, and you'll find just that, a lot to love. Start your shopping online at SubaruOfGwinnett.com and find the ride that best suits you, because love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Subaru of Gwinnett, Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, and online at SubaruOfGwinnett.com. What are your plans for your business this year? Hey, it's Tug. Do you want to expand and grow? Aren't you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you got a new person to deal with? You have to start all over again? You don't have that with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they want to know you. 
Unlike big banks, they want to partner with you. The Frost family knows the patterns. They know the ebbs and flows. They know business. Get to know them at FirstLibertyGA.com. Building a building? Buying a building? Buying a franchise? Expanding? Reach out to them. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. You do that at FirstLibertyGA.com. And by the way, if you're a young banker and want to work with a team that is faith-friendly and has a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to them today. First Liberty Building and Loan. FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. Hey, sandwich lovers. Today is your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corners Shopping Center. Now open. Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacy and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. Hey there, it's Janelle King, host of the Janelle King Show right here on Extra 106.3 FM, where we are unafraid and unapologetic. We explore the topics that matter the most. You can catch us on Saturdays at 4 p.m. and Encore episode on Sundays at 9 a.m. And catch up on past episodes by going to the podcast park right here at Extra 106.3 or wherever you get your podcasts every single Tuesday. Until then, stay unafraid, stay unapologetic, and never stop seeking the truth. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peroni's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one evaluation and resolve your ED, Peronis, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at StopMyED.com. Lee Brand Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Lee Brand Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state of the art Rolex service center in their store. Lee Brand uses only genuine Rolex parts and their estimates are free. Drop by Lee Brand in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs or visit LeeBrand.com. Uh, Joe Lieberman just died. Former VP candidate oh. Joe Lieberman, 82 years old, just passed away. Just saw it on a headline here. That's a shame. He was, he was an interesting guy. Uh, seemed like a legitimate fellow. A uh, little on the uh, Frico side, uh, lefty, but you know... Joe Emma Hadassah, his lovely bride. Joe Lieberman passed away at the age of 82. Roy Orbison here, 1966. Roy was on a UK tour in Britain, fell off a motorbike at a park and broke his foot. He had the rest of his dates. He was sitting on a stool and walking around on crutches, which is certainly reasonable. Our birthday list includes Michael York. Michael York is 82. The uh, actor Basil Exposition in the Austin Powers movies. Logan from Logan's Run. That's one where they had to escape being killed when they hit 30 or something, right? Wasn't yeah, that the 30. One? Uh, yeah, he was D'Artagnan. Uh, D'Artagnan and also bisexual Brian in Cabaret. <laughs> Which I don't think I ever saw that one. Uh, let's see, let's see. A couple of birds. Uh, oh, here we go. On this day, 1973, Marlon. Oh, we, do we have a Peach Tweets? And we still have a Frowners Funny? And uh, uh, God, we're doing great here. Okay, hold on. On this day, 73, Marlon Brando refused the Best Actor Oscar for The Godfather as a gesture of support for the Indians occupying the Wounded Knee Reservation in South Dakota. He sent the native, so-called Native American actress Sashin Littlefeather to the ceremony to refuse the Oscar for him. But uh, Sashin is actually Mexican. Her real name is Maria Cruz. Remember, we kind of outed her about this. Her family wrote a book about it. Uh, she did claim to have some Indian on her father's side. <laughs> anyway, in uh, 73. And uh, Liza Minnelli won Best Actress for 
cabaret, ironically. How is your father's side these days? (laughs) He's doing great. Much better. (laughs) Well, here's my stepladder. My real ladder's over there, but this is my stepladder. On this day, 1988, by the way, this is officially um, Niagara, uh, 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 Viagra Day. And it was because on this day in 1998, the FDA approved the first pill for male impotence, (laughs) uh, uh, Viagra. And then uh, came Cialis. And uh, I don't, I don't know what the hell's on there. It's in this stage, what do we ask about? Okay. Anyway, uh, I, I, I may have one more here to get rid of. Do I have one more? Nah, that's fine. Let's call that a day. Uh, five fifty-three. You want to do any, uh, some tweeter Rooney? So let's do a Calabanga. Yes, the, we got uh, five fifty-four on the clock already, and uh, running out of time. We're looking forward to a tweet. We got tweets. We got Pete. Uh, the thing we call Pete's tweets. You know. <laughs> Mike points out if you see a toilet in your dreams. Yes. Don't use it. <laughs> Why take a chance? You know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> or uh, the guy Gina? who said, or the guy who said to his wife, "Honey, uh, does our light automatically come on when you open the uh, uh, the bathroom door?" She says, "No." He says, "Oh crap! Well, I went in the bathroom in the refrigerator again, or some something like that." I forgot that thing was. <laughs> oh, thank, thanks for uh, continuing the joke past the point of funny. <laughs> Should have known when thanks. to stop. <laughs> yeah. Gina Carano, the actress fired by Disney from The Mandalorian and also from the Deadpool movie, she tweeted, The most disturbing trend in the last few years is the destruction of the innocence of childhood in an attempt to validate insecure and sick adults. To validate insecure and sick adults. To validate the self-loathing who feel better at what they do to you. And by the way, another week, another LGBTQ activist arrested on child pornography charges. There's oh, some dude man. up in Princeton who runs an organization up in Princeton, uh, queer Princeton alumni or something. And he's been caught with child pornography, too. So it's uh, at least once a week we get one of these leaders yeah. that are actually perverts preying on children. But we're supposed to just look the other way. Yeah. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Kimmer, I gave up my seat to a blind person on the bus. You gave up your seat to a blind person? Wow. Yeah, but that's how I lost my job as a bus driver. Ho, hey, hi, oh, ho, ha, oh. And there's Pete's tweets. Oh, God. Me. By the way, uh, and you're going to set the little headline here. Apparently, Chicago is reconsidering what's now being labeled an offensive plan to rename Columbus Drive for Barack Hussein Putitat Obama after outraged Italian Americans step in to say, wait a minute now. Oh, oh, <laughs> be very careful, my friend. <laughs> my friend, <laughs> Chicago, Columbus Drive. You're asking for it. And then Flounder, is this a, a, a headline from Babylon B? Uh, DeSantis kicked out of the Republican Party for accomplishing too many things. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Dad. The move was announced after deliberation by the GOP at all levels of government. He's just getting things done. Damn it, he doesn't belong to the party. We don't. Know what the hell his deal is? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, anyway, uh, oh, by the way, there, there, I read the. Uh, I think Vanity Fair or something has a big article about the guy who followed the Beatles around in 1964. A photographer named Harry Benson. He's written a book. And he talks about some of his exploits, and he says he would, they were celebrating the 60th anniversary of his snapshots, talking about when they are uh, photographing the Beatles with Muhammad Ali. He, uh, he said, Benson said, uh, uh, let's see, they were, they were, uh, the fighter was preparing to go toe-to-toe against Sonny List, and the band was gearing up to appear on Ed Sullivan's show. Uh, and Benson chuckled to the Fox News people saying, uh, Ali told the Beatles, your music is not that good. Let's just say they uh, did not like that. And when the Beatles said, well, we hear you're not that good a boxer, they all laughed about it, but it wasn't a match made in heaven. He said, uh, Ali kept referring to the Beatles as tiny, small, little men. Uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were incensed. They were not impressed. And Ali pretended to knock them out. And they wanted to take pictures of Ali pretending to knock out the Beatles and so forth. He'd line them up and do that. He was making faces. And the Beatles were reluctant. Uh, Ali dwarfed them. Uh, He was making fun of them. Uh, he said, I'm much better looking than all four of you guys put together. Just look at me. He knew the Beatles were smart asses, but they weren't going to be that way with him. And when the Beatles were, uh, the shoot was over, the Beatles let the uh, photographer have it. Uh, John Lennon said it was a mistake going to see Ali. He made us feel to look stupid. He, everything he did wanted to do was strut it around demanding we look at him. He pretended to punch his head. It looked like horrible like hell. And the photographer says, the Beatles never forgave me. Good. For the meeting with Ali. I, I've always said Ali... 
for most of his life was a big a hole. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew a guy who knew him in Louisville when he was when he was a kid, showing off his skills, and he had skills, man. When he was eighteen, nineteen, yeah. he could take a baseball bat by the end of it and wiggle it like a straw. I mean, that's how strong he was. Uh, five, five, God, we're almost out of time. Flounder, I can't believe it. Should we do a little Flounder's Funny? Let's do a little Flounder's Funny. What do you think? I know you know who Bill Clinton is, but I was doing a show at a college, and I mentioned Bill Clinton, and, like, they kind of didn't know who he was. Like, sorry, they knew the name, right? But they only knew this 2015 Bill Clinton, who's a very different Bill Clinton. <laughs> Have you seen his ass lately? What the hell is he trying to pull? He's all thin now, and he wears these little tight suits and he's got these grandpa reading glasses like hey I can't do nothing to nobody no more you know <laughs> oh me I'm just an old old man I don't have the appetites you know and he's always flying around the world with Bill Gates trying to cure AIDS <laughs> that is not the Bill Clinton that we all signed up for 20 years ago our Bill Clinton was like a big fat Buddy Garrity from Friday Night Lights looking guy who played the saxophone on Arsenio and his work in the STD community was not in curing anything at that, time. <laughs> that was the man we all elected president <laughs> who is that flounder that is Mr. John Mulaney uh, oh I recognize that voice anyway guys have a great day Kimmer say gotta go you're killing me Pete and Flounder tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. It's live showtime. Look out, herp and herp. Look out, here we go. The Morning Extra from 6 to 10 a.m. And The Kimmer Show from 3 to 6 p.m. Only on WFOM and W292EV Marietta. Extra 106.3 FM.